Hello friends, welcome to Coding Garden with CJ. Welcome to Noob Quest. In this episode of Noob Quest, we Okay, I have restarted my software. Please let me know, are we clipping? <laughs> um, <laughs> I may need, uh, depending on if it's fixed or not, I may need to like just make a new YouTube link and like just get the, get the issues worked out here. My ear says sorted. Does that mean it's fixed? Sound is good, Simj ah, we did it, okay. It sounds uh, good on my end. Okay, cool. Um, we're only seven minutes in, I guess that's not bad. People will just skip past this. They'll forget all about it in the future. Um, <laughs> uh, awesome. Yeah, everyone appears to be saying it's working. And hello, Christian. Welcome to the stream. Um, you, he says, I see CJ as a unicorn. Do you mean because I'm wearing coding trade? <laughs> Wait, is coding trade unicorns? Cool. Everybody sounds good. Says it's good. Okay, so... Um, Let's let's restart this whole explanation of what we're doing because I don't know if the audio was good or not or whatever whenever we first started. So the idea is we are going to be building an organization landing page from scratch with HTML, SAS, and Flexbox. So in past NoobQuest streams, we've very much focused on like JavaScript and backend coding or front-end coding. Today is always going to be all about style and design and layout. Um, and for that, we are going to be, we're starting a company, Tony and I, called Save the Emojis. The website is savetheemojis.org. Um, and basically, the, <laughs> the main idea is every day dozens of emojis are left unforgotten and unused. And together with this website, we're going to help those emojis thrive and stay alive. Um, so Tony has uh, graciously come up with all the wireframes. We're going to have a landing page with like a nav bar and a center section and things you can click on. We'll have a sign up page. We'll have a page where you can donate. And then we'll have some stats about uh, all the endangered emojis. But we're going to attempt to build each of these pages from scratch with uh, HTML, SAS, and Flexbox and other CSS things. Um, 
Oh, I see. <laughs> oh, Christian was saying there was something in the background that was like pointing off of my head as like a horn. Okay. Hello, Skelly. Welcome to the stream. And who is Tom? Who is Tom? Welcome. Are you still there, Tony? Yeah, I'm just uh, playing with uh, some color palettes okay, right cool. now. Okay, cool. Yeah, and so that's the other thing. So one thing, so Tony has come up with these wireframes. So we've just, we've basically thought ahead of how we're going to lay out the website. Um, and then we've also picked out some fonts. So we're going to be using Google Fonts. We're going to be using Days 1 as our header font. So like anything that's like a title or like larger text, we're going to use this font. And then anything that's body copy, we'll be using Open Sans. So that'll be good. Um, and then also, I don't, I don't believe we've, we've used SAS on the stream before, but SAS is a CSS preprocessor. So basically, um, it has a special syntax that uh, you write, and then you run it through a processor, and it turns it into CSS, and you can use it. But it has some really cool features. Uh, let's see if we can pull up like the features list. Yes, so it has really cool features like CSS variables. So when we come up, uh, Tony right now is picking out a color scheme. So we can pick like a, a primary color and a secondary color. And we basically make those as variables. And then throughout our CSS, we can just reference those variables. And then later on, if we want to change uh, the primary color, we can just change it in one place and it'll change everywhere, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so right now, I like the way I'm, I'm using it. Like I'm kind of just playing around with some different like kind of kind of vivid, almost like just different ideas of, of color schemes. And I guess we can kind of vote on which one we're going to use. Definitely, yeah. So if you can, um, I guess you, I should make you a chat. Tony, uh, send a message in the, uh, the YouTube chat real quick. Hold on. I think I can make you a mod and then you can actually send links out. Hello, hello. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay, let me see. Add as moderator. Anthony Lamatina is now a moderator for your channel. Uh, try sending a link to like a color palette. Uh, hold on just a second. I'm going to, yeah, I'll okay, cool. name it. <laughs> um, and Tiger just asked, uh, when will I add the React tutorial? Actually, like the, on the, on my, uh, Code Cottage stream the other day, um, I released a, a playlist. So it, it's there. It's just not totally visible because all of the videos themselves are, um, not public, but the playlist is public. So if you go into playlists, there is now a playlist, build a CRUD client with React. It has 16 videos in it. And this playlist is public, but each of the videos are actually still unlisted. But if you go to playlists, you should be able to see it. And it's a 16 part series on building a CRUD client with React, React Router, and Bootstrap. All right, so I just sent, I'm sending some links right now into the okay, cool. chat. See it. Yeah, they worked. Awesome. So, um, yeah, we're going to just uh, go to site, I think. Cool. Yeah, and so um, this is another website. It's by Adobe, and it basically lets you choose uh, color palettes and complementary colors. Um, so there's, there's some theory behind, like, choosing, like, a primary and secondary color. Um, so as Tony is going to send out a few of them, and we can we can choose which one we want to use. Yeah, and then if we don't like any of these, then <laughs> just keep going. And the cool thing is, is like you could you could look at this this theme and like edit your own copy, like uh, like that little button in the bottom corner where it says Edit Copy under Actions. Yeah, so I could click on it and like change. Yeah, oh so, yeah yeah yeah. And but like basically on the left, you can you can kind of view like. Um, you can base that on like more of a color theory because like you can just kind of drag it around. Yeah, but you may not know things, what you're doing, but so the color wheel is kind of like um, I don't know if like a, if you're familiar with the circle of fifths in music. A little bit. Yeah, basically every like color has some sort of like complement or um, every like other color is related to it in some manner. So like the complement mm -hmm. of a color is is like the opposite of that color. And typically, like on the wheel, it'd be like almost on the opposite side. Exactly. So, like, with exactly. this one, we have it set as custom. But if we choose analogous, now, like any time I move, all of the other things in the palette are moving to become like complementary to the colors that I choose. Right. And so, like one of the cool things is like right below, you can actually see like the hex values of the colors that we're selecting. So we can actually um, just immediately put those in our CSS or whatever we're using. Right. And I guess uh, another thing to talk about, um, 
uh, because a lot of times with like choosing colors and design you have to take into like accessibility so like um, a lot of people like to do like green for success red for error yellow for like warning um, but coming from someone like you tony who's colorblind um, if they don't choose the right like contrast of those colors they're actually kind of like hard to differentiate um, so i'm also guessing like for you because you chose out these color themes they're probably a little bit more um, distinct between the colors yeah, that's exactly. Like, I, I, I don't mind, like, color palettes that are, like, more, like, kind of washed together. But for me, when I usually pick things, like, if it's not, like, some sort of, like, fine art, like, painting type thing, I like things to be very distinct. Um, so, like, the first one I, I, I sent you, um, that one? one yeah. yeah, that one right there. Like, I, I, I really like this one because I feel like the colors are all, for the most part, really distinct. Yeah, I mean, to me, these two blues are like fairly similar. This one's a little bit darker. Right, and we don't necessarily have to um, use all of these colors, right? Like this right. is just like Adobe uh, Cooler tends to work in like increments of five, but I mm. think like you know, like the first four definitely these. Fit. I think these are good colors to use, and like like because we're using SAS, like if we decide to change it later on, it's real quick and easy. Definitely. Um, Ed in the chat is mentioning the one with green and purple. I think that's this one. Yeah. The one with green and purple are quite nice. It's fitting coating garden colors as like grass and flowers, and the yellow is the classic emoji color. That's what, that's one of the reasons I picked that one. <laughs> cool. I thought that'd kind of go with our theme. Awesome. And it's, this whole thing is kind of, um, I don't know if we mentioned it, it's kind of like a, just a parody, a little bit of uh, like kind of a generic startup, kind of save the world like millennial kind of thing. <laughs> right, and that's, so that's the idea. Like, um, we have come up with these mock-ups, but like, there's so many websites today that like, have this very similar layout. Um, and you can find like, uh, you can buy a theme or like buy a, a layout that looks exactly like this, but we're just gonna try to make it from scratch. <laughs> um, this might be a multiple part thing, or at least we'll probably have some work to do in terms of like, off the uh, stream. Definitely. A uh, cool question from Skelly in the chat. Is there any tool to simulate colorblind view? There yes. is. Yeah. Do you know which one? Um, I just I type in colorblind viewing tools or something. Colorblind Chrome extension? I know like within like, a lot of the Adobe products, there's colorblind settings. I mm. use a lot of, um, when I'm trying to view colors, I'll use a lot of like eyedropper type tools. So if I select a color, I can see like what color, like, like there's a generic name for whatever color it, it is. Right. Um, Adobe Cooler actually has um, it automatically creates tags with whatever color palette you have. So it'll say like blue, gold, like those are tags that are in there because those colors are technically involved, or it might say cool or pastel or something. Yeah. So I'm gonna install this color blinding one. Um, let's see what it does. So you can turn it on and simulate a certain type of color blind. Um, what what color blind are you, Tony? Uh, I th think it's, I'm considered, uh, that the first one, like, uh, Pertanopia, Pertanopia, is that <laughs> I think <laughs> that's the one, I, I don't, I don't remember exactly, but, uh, yeah, uh, Sim John in the chat is saying, Mark Brown did a video on colorblindness in video games, that's interesting, like, on, um, mm. like, on some games, like, uh, Battlefield, they actually have colorblind settings to change, like, the sort of, uh, contrast between, like, friendly, and enemy uh, units because it's like just it'll be like red or blue text on the screen. I'm curious if this or is even if this is working. <laughs> let's let's see like Google.com. Oh, 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 it definitely is. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because because I mean, I'm like, and that's the thing is like it changes for me, but I I imagine like the change for me is probably more intense than say like the change for you. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. But so this is red, 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 blue. I think I think that's the funny thing. Like, if I choose this, um, I, I still see a change. I don't see a change at all. Like, these all look exactly the same to me. Whether it's so, if I do that versus doing that, do you actually see a difference? No, but okay. like that's that's the thing. Is like, <laughs> I you got color palettes made by a colorblind person, so that makes sense that they wouldn't really change. Yeah, um, I'm just curious if like maybe it's not working on this website because maybe oh, yeah, it doesn't of, look like it's the, changing at yeah, all. Yeah, all of the blues are staying the same. Why don't you um, try just, can, you can view like a, a bigger image of that. Like I think you can double click on the palette and it, 
Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, try it. Yeah, well, let, let, right. I just removed it. Let me find one more. Color blind Chrome extension. We're talking about this a lot, but uh, people in the chat are mentioning it's it's something very interesting. And then people that that oh Spectrum I think is the one I might have used before. I guess try it. Um, if you don't think about it, then you just never do it or never would think to do it. But, but this is kind of like how we were talking before, like people with uh, visual impairments, like how do they even use the internet? And there's right. like the screen readers and all these sort of things that like, I think it's really important that you consider these sort of things. Because for example, if the color distinctions aren't very vivid, like if I'm looking at a some sort of chart, like a map, for example, that's supposed to have like, uh, you know, it could be crime rates, it could be um, mm -hmm. locations of whatever, a lot of times if that map, the colors are too close together, I can't tell what I'm looking at. Cool. Uh, suggestion from Ed, refresh the page. I think it's because I just installed the extension, but yes, I refreshed the page and it actually works. So um, normal looks like this. And then Botanopia looks like this. This looks like a brownish color and like yellow to me now. And yeah, like it changes for me because like the first one, like it's sort of red in the center. It's like yeah. a red, kind of pinkish red, but I think that's sort of... <laughs> No contrast. Awesome. Okay. Um, <laughs> fun stuff to mention. Uh, Kamalesh, hello, welcome to the stream. And hey, AJ, welcome back. So we've talked a lot about color. I think we're probably going, let me turn this off. Yeah, this is, I think we might go with this one. And like we said, we can change it later. Um, and so before we get into like setting up the website, let me just talk a little bit more about SAS. So I mentioned SAS allows you to create variables. So we'll be able to create like, uh, we'll create a variable, call it, Primary, we could call it green, uh, we could call it yellow, we could call it purple, but then later on, we could actually change those values, but the rest of our code stays exactly the same. So it gives us the ability to define things in one place and use it in multiple places. Um, the other cool thing is nesting. So a lot of times with CSS, you're targeting like a parent element and then some child inside of it. Um, and you actually have to define multiple um, CSS uh, rule sets to target them, but with SAS, you can nest them. So this is like uh, target the nav, and then any UL that's a descendant of the nav should have this style. And then any LI that's a descendant of the nav will have this style. So um, it looks it, like it is, it looks like CSS because any valid um, CSS is valid SAS or uh, SCSS. Um, but it gives you these cool features. Um, it's important to note, we are going to use the SCSS version, which like looks like uh, CSS. There's also SAS, which uh, doesn't have um, uh, curly braces or semicolons, and it's based on white space. But I prefer to use this one because it looks a lot similar to CSS. It's, it's easier to go into if you've already done CSS before. I, yeah, I think uh, SC, SCSS, I think, just makes more sense. I mean, uh, it's, it's like a, you, there's like the different... Um, uh, things for like HTML and JavaScript too that'll basically do the same thing where it's like it makes it look less code. Well, less. yeah, like, well, um, so those are like white space languages. So, yeah, so like this is a white space language. Uh, CoffeeScript is like a white space language that compiles down to JavaScript, but uh, white space means something. So, like, if you have an extra tab, your code might not actually work. So, like, this is CoffeeScript, which get ter gets turned into this JavaScript. And yeah, then... this is just anxiety-inducing. It <laughs> um, like, takes out everything you've learned. <laughs> um, and then there's Pug, which is like a templating language, um, which used to be Jade. But um, let's can we see an example. I think if I just search for Jade, we'll probably see an example. Yes, so you write code like this and it gets turned into this HTML. Um, it's interesting to talk about these things because all of these things I just mentioned are called preprocessors. Basically, you write it like this and then some tool will turn it into something that the browser understands because the browser only understands HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. That's it. It doesn't understand any of these other things. So it's like a developer tool that makes the code you write a little bit shorter and then you run it through the tool to generate something that will actually work inside of the browser. And that's specifically what SAS is. Um, yeah, partials and imports. So you can actually define your SAS in separate files and then import files. I think CSS actually got that feature now. So you can import other CSS files into a CSS file. Um, Mixins, which are basically like functions that you can call inside of your SAS. 
Um, all kinds of really cool features, uh, calculating and operators. We're mainly going to use like variables and nesting and probably like uh, partials. But yeah, cool. Um, yes. uh, Meyer just asked, are we going to use parcel for bundling? I didn't plan on it because I do, I do want to keep this fairly just like introductory. Um, but we can see on the SAS website like how they actually um, transpile the SAS. I, th I guess this is the thing like if we use if we use something like Parcel, it'll just do it for us like automatically. We won't have to do any configuration. Hmm. What do you think, Tony? Should we we use a tool that like configures it for us, or should we have to like run a command line that converts the SAS for us? Um. I don't know. Let's try doing the command line. Okay. Um, I was gonna say, uh, are we gonna mention uh, Unsplash as well? Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. So for our, um, we're gonna have like beautiful uh, background images and Unsplash. For that, we're gonna use this Unsplash website. Beautiful free images and pictures. We'll find some really nice like rainforest images. For and these are all, I think, royalty free. Like royalty completely free. royalty free. If yeah. I'm not mistaken. What if I search for, yeah, search free high resolution images, rainforest. Wow. Oh, so that was another thing. <laughs> I, I want, um, I think it'd be cool if like, uh, whatever page you're on might have like a couple different images that it could sort of, uh, like kind of fade in through almost like a slideshow, almost like your desktop background. Okay. And on top of that, basically you could almost think of it like, like that's the background. And then our text is like the front layer. And in that middle layer, I think we should have just emojis sort of floating from like right to left um, random, randomly. OK. That stuff we'll probably have to use JavaScript for. We might be able to do like some CSS animation. But like, so you want like a, a, almost like a CSS slideshow or like an image slideshow? slideshow? Yeah, so like each each tab or maybe even the whole website, uh, whatever has say like four or five images that kind of you know fades in and out through, okay. while the emojis just kind of flow across the screen. <laughs> okay, that itself and sounds like a coding challenge. Um, we may not get to that, but cool. Did, am I missing anything? I think yeah. that's pretty much it. Um, okay. <laughs> this is going to be awesome. It's going to be great. <laughs> hey, man, welcome to the stream. And uh, in Mr. Mr. Quirk, that's what I'll call you. Hello. <laughs> but yes, let's let's get started. We've talked enough. Um, but yeah, so my year did suggest parcel. I think I think we're just going to use we're going to we're going to use all these tools. Um, we'll probably use light server for auto refreshing. We'll use um, node SAS, which will transpile our CSS for us. Um, just to see what the tools use. Maybe if at the end uh, we have enough time, uh, we might use something like uh, Parcel. Um, potentially also use something like like Webpack uh, requires a little bit more configuration because you have to add like the SAS plugin and things like that. Um, but that's extra. <laughs> also, uh, congrats on 3K subscribers there. Oh, thanks, man. Um, yeah, we talked about it last time, but. We did it. Actually, uh, I think there's the CGRT sub. I, th I think you should do like a 5K subscriber special and then, you know, like Definitely. every benchmark. Oh, this has to load up real quick. But yes, 3,078 subscribers. We've done it. Thank you and you and you and you and you and you. You're all great. <laughs> um, let's see, did my site load? Yeah, there we go. So I, I built this uh, when I was really close to 2,000 subscribers. Um, when it hit 2,000, it started raining emojis. See, Ma <laughs> see, like we just have that just going from right to left or left to right. Okay, it, uh, we used so there was, this was a lot of JavaScript to make this these emojis happen. Um, I'm gonna put it down as a stretch. Yeah, and, and I think slower. <laughs> it's like a majestic procession. This is kind of too fast. Yeah. Well, this is celebratory, well, you know. Yeah, like I want it to be like the Jurassic Park herd of dinosaurs in the background kind of thing. Okay. Um, awesome. We've talked enough. Let's do it. Let's get into it. So let me share remote control. And oh, 
I need to pull up my terminal. <laughs> Everybody gets free borscht. <laughs> that's always that's always a good laugh. Um, and then save the emojis .org. I actually did buy that domain this morning, so don't even try it. Um, and um, and that's the that's the last thing. Don't forget. Let's not forget to deploy. So this is a real uh, deployed website. It's yeah, it's going to be this Heroku anymore. Yeah, it's going to be a real website. Save the, the emojis .org. Uh, okay, Tony, let's create a directory for all of our code. Um, okay. So we'll uh, do a mictor. Let's just call it uh, client. Like, we, we are just going to be doing front-end coding today, but it, eventually maybe we decide to, um, um, like, build a back-end for, like, email sign-up or something like that. I don't know. Okay, uh, in the client folder, because we are going to be using SAS, let's initialize this as an npm directory, so do npm init space uh, dash y. So that should answer yes to all the default questions, and then that generates package JSON here. Cool. Um, let's install the things we need. So we're going to install light server, so it automatically refreshes while we code. And are we're we going to use it. yarn or npm? We'll use npm. And then we'll also install node SAS, which will transpile our, our uh, SAS. So right. do npm install. Let's do uh, dash dash save dash dev, because these are uh, well uh, no space there dash dev, because these are development dependencies, um, and we want uh, node dash sas node sas, and we also want uh, light server, l i t e dash server. Yes. And I think with light server. Um my experience, like you need to have an index.html file or it won't work properly. Wait, say that again? Um, with light server, like you need an index.html uh, file for it to load. Yeah, so light server is actually, well, actually we may not want to use light server. Be, um, we'll see if we run into issues. Because one thing about light server is it's especially configured for single page applications, meaning like something built with, um, where all of the URLs are going to the main page, to like the index. Um, mm -hmm. That's fine, we'll use it for now. And let's just go ahead and create a, a basic index.html file right there in the client folder. All right, I'm gonna create file. Yeah. If I can click it, okay, there we go, new file. <laughs> uh, index.html. All right. Okay. Uh, let's do like a basic HTML template thingy. Should be able to do HTML and just tab. Yeah, there we go. Uh, and then I'll go ahead and put the title in because I'm going to throw some emojis. So like save the emojis part. Part. Part emoji. Um, and balloon. Cool. <laughs> it's my break timer. Take a quick stretch. Oh yeah, uh, Flamingo is mentioning uh, they're on the job hunt after graduating from a boot camp. Stay strong. Um, I think the main thing is like keep working on projects, um, keep practicing your coding skills. Like don't don't let the fact that you don't have a job right now like make you fall away from doing all of those things. Um, because especially like in interviews, you want to talk about like what you've been working on. But yeah, stay strong. And I would say like, <laughs> I mean. I'm speaking as someone who hasn't necessarily got in a full-time job yet, but like a lot of areas have like um, like some sort of Slack channel or something for mm -hmm. like developers, and like you can find out about a lot of really cool things, like whether it's meetups, like for networking opportunities, or even like job postings within that. Definitely some really good resources. So like I'm I'm in the New York City uh, JavaScript tech Slack. I'm in the the Denver one and. Both of those have specific job channels where they just talk about opportunities and things like that. Um, Christian mentions he's on the job hunt as well. I am personally actually on the job hunt as well. <laughs> um, we're all on the job we're hunt. We're all right? on the job hunt, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, we, have, we have some references here for, uh, so we just generated this. We have references to like main and a JavaScript file. For now, I'm gonna get rid of those and let's just have like an H1 that has this same message and let's do this. So in our package JSON, we want a start script. So let's change this test to say start. 
and the value will just be a uh, light dash server. So on the right hand side in the double quotes there, let's get rid of everything. Just make that light dash server. Cool. And so now that we have the start script in this folder, we should be able to do npm start and it should open up the browser and show us save the emojis. Awesome. <laughs> so we've got a basic web page. Let's try to get SAS going. Um, so looking at the documentation, actually let's let's look up Node SAS because that's what we just installed. Um, it should work exactly the same way, but the main thing is um, SAS is actually, I think dependent on Ruby, Node SAS, um, yeah, provide bindings from the C version, but cool. So you could use it in code like this. We actually want to use it on the command line. Do, 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 do. I'm going to run to the restroom real quick. While Go you for it. I'm going to figure out how to use this from the command line. I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. The command line interface. So the idea is we're going to tell it what is the, the SAS file that we want to compile and uh, where do we want to output it to. Um, so let's do this. In the client folder, let's create a new folder called um, SCSS. So this is going to be where we're going to put all of our uh, SAS styles. And inside of that, I'm going to create a new file called uh, index.scss. And for now, let's just do a basic body style. So let's say the body has a width of 100 view width and a height of 100 view height and a text align center. And for now, font family sans serif. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to, like right now, this, this is still, this is valid CSS, but um, we still want to take this SAS file and turn it into a CSS file. So if we look at the command line, um, it says we can do node SAS, some options, input, and then where do we want to output it to? So let's create a new directory and um, let's just call this styles. And basically anything that we transpile is gonna get put into this folder. So the thing we want to do, let's call this, um, let's create a script called styles. It's gonna say node sass, anything that's in, well not anything, we'll say scss slash index.scss should be output to styles slash index.css. I'm back, by the way. Okay, cool. So what we have done, Tony, is we created a folder for our SAS files. Right now, I just created like a super basic, like this isn't even SAS yet. It's just um, some, some C CSS. But what we want to do is run the command, which will convert this into CSS and put it into the styles folder. Awesome. Okay, and so in our package JSON, I've done node SAS. You specify what is the input and what is the output. And I got that by reading the docs here for command line interface. So if we run npm run styles, it should do that. So rendering complete, saving CSS file. And if we go back, we should see now we have a CSS file. Um, the only difference is it put this curly brace on that line. But if we were to write some actual SAS code in here, it would get transpiled in there. Um, and there are some options. So we can pass in dat bat dash w, and basically that will um, watch it for changes. And that way, anytime we update our SAS, it'll automatically transpile it, which in turn should automatically uh, refresh the browser. So what we want to do is in our index.html, we want to add a link to styles slash index.css. So go ahead and throw uh, styles slash index.css in there. Uh, slash. Yeah. Because uh, basically, this is where all of the things that get generated are going to go. And our HTML needs to reference actual CSS, so that'll happen. So if we go back, we our styles are being applied. That's awesome. But Let's, let's do this. Um, let's create a script that's like styles. Well, let's make our styles um, watch. So if we do a dash W there, 
when we run styles, it won't quit. So it should just, it should do it. And then anytime a file is changed, it automatically updates it. So if we go back to our SAS and let's, let's throw in some, some actual um, SAS code here. So let's say we want to target any H1 that is a child of the body. So throw H1 in there. And then let's just like change the font size. So say like font size is 3M. Okay, save it. If we look at the terminal, it noticed that it changed. And if we go back to the browser, um, did it work? I have no idea. We can look at it. And we can see, yeah, it yes. Yeah, it does. So we can see body H1 font size 3M. So we're all hooked up. Now like, we can change any SAS code. It automatically transpile it, child's, transpiles it, and the browser will automatically refresh. Um, we can also look at the outputted code, and we can see that this actually got turned into like valid CSS. Um, let me catch up on the chat real quick. Raphael is asking, how do I feel about using Jade or Pug with SAS? Um, I personally have not really uh, become too too fond of like HTML preprocessors. Uh, I, I like HTML. <laughs> um, but you, you can use, yeah, you can use SAS in conjunction with like any other templating language, even, like even for HTML. Um, yes, and Meyer is mentioning we can use concurrently to run them parallelly using one command. Um, so we might do that. So basically, uh, when we start, we want to run styles and light server. So let's actually let's actually do this. Um, well, I can't see anything. I lost the zoom image. Hold on. Wait, you like you can't see anything? Hold on, I gotta open, reopen the meeting. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, you oh. should have the, you should have the link in Discord. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, we could we could set these up. So concurrently is a um, a tool that's on npm that lets you run two commands um, simultaneously. Um, <laughs> but if, if you're familiar with like bash scripting, you actually can do like uh, a single ampersand to run things in, in parallel. Um, I think the only issue with that is sometimes like one process will finish, but the other one won't. So let's do it. Let's use concurrently. Why not? Are you, are you back, Tony? Yeah, I'm here. Can okay, you hear cool. me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you see my screen? <laughs> yes. Okay, so we're gonna install this in concurrently thing. So npm install dash dash save dev concurrently. And basically we're gonna create one task that runs both light server and watching our SAS files at the same time. Um, let me see really quick though, because concurrently apparently has vulnerabilities in it. Oh no, light server does. Let's fix it. I feel like we're just delaying the actual getting to coding. <laughs> or we're um, setting everything up. We are, okay, but let me, let me see. So right now, the issue here is um, NPM actually will tell you if your packages have vulnerabilities in them. Technically, this isn't that big of an issue because we're not really even going to be using these tools whenever we deploy it. So we don't really have to be uh, worried about the vulnerabilities in them. However, I don't, I don't like that. Um, there's another tool called Live Server, um, very similar to Light Server, but it just works a little bit differently. Let's use this instead. So I'm going to uninstall Light Server. And we're going to install, as a dev dependency, live server. Wait, does this one have? Mm. This one also has vulnerabilities. Ugh. Try to fix it. Mm. 
required manual review and could not be updated. Well, okay. Um, I guess we're gonna ignore that for now. And the main reasoning is um, this is all for local development. Like we're not gonna be putting node SAS and live server on any server somewhere. When we actually deploy this, we're just going to be deploying the static files themselves, not, not the actual code here. So I'm okay with that. But we did just install uh, concurrently. So let's uh, hook that up. So what we can do is, so let's create a script called um, watch server. And this is where we'll do live server. And then we'll create another script called watch styles. And this is the one that watches the styles. And then start will be, uh, we'll use concurrently. So we'll say, please concurrently um, npm run watch server. And npm run watch styles. So this should start up the server and watching the styles all in one terminal, all in one go. Let's try it. Concurrently running. Um, the server and the styles. And notice that uh, live server is actually running on port 8080 instead of port uh, 3000, which is okay. But okay, I think we're good. Let's, let's get to coding. Are you still there, Tony? Yep. Hi. <laughs> 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 okay, so, uh, we're all set up. Let's let's do this. So our first our first mockup is the landing page, um, and basically we have like this black nav bar up top. We have some centered text, and then we have like the three buttons here. So um, what I think we should do is um, set up our our index to uh, or like our, our main styles to have full width and height, and also be a flex box. Okay. Um, so yeah, let's do this. And the main thing to, to know and to remember is we don't touch the CSS because the CSS is automatically being generated. So all of the code we write is gonna go in our SAS file here. Um, let's get rid of that H1 style for now. Um, and let's say the body has display of flex. Oh, sorry, uh, we're already in the body style. So you can just say display flex. And uh, we want the things to go down. So if you look, if you look at our um, mockup or our wireframe, sorry, it's navbar, middle section, and then the buttons. So if we do flex direction uh, column, it should go. The things should go down, which is what we want. So let's say uh, flex direction is column. Okay, and then. Um, I believe the the things the thing we want is um, space between, right? Because we want our our nav bar. So it would be um, justify content, I think. Uh, yeah. And so someone asked earlier if we use CSS Grid um, specifically for this. I think this is a good use case for Flexbox. Um, both Flexbox and CSS Grid have their, have their use cases. Um, specifically, I like to use, I want to use Flexbox here because um, we're not necessarily putting things on a grid. We're like laying things out, having things horizontally centered, having things all pushed all the way to the top. So to me, my mind goes to Flexbox. You could do this with CSS Grid, um, but I think Flexbox is good for this. There might be something that we do use CSS Grid for, like, potentially maybe like on the donate page for these three things. Still, this could be done with a flex box. Um, but let's try um, justify content space between. Okay, let's see what we get so far. Okay, that's still there, <laughs> that's great. Um, it is detecting our changes, so that's awesome. 
Um, but let's do this. So let's get rid of this header and let's just create, oh, sorry, get rid of that h1 and let's create a header. So let's just uh, use like the actual header tag. Uh, no, like, uh, I'll show you, header. Yeah, that's oh, a legit, okay. <laughs> it's a legitimate tag. Um, and so let's now style that. So go to our, our SAS file. All right. And let's say, um, yeah, let's do it as an, a nested styling. So a header that is a child of body, let's give it a, a background color, or so, just say, yeah, background color. Uh, dash color <laughs> and um, let's actually we could use a variable for this let's let's use a variable because we can demonstrate how those things work so if we look at the SAS docs for variables um, you define your variables with a dollar sign and then give it some value so let's say up here um, let's define yeah, let's, bring, a, let's bring in our colors um, are we going to be, I think, I mean, are, what color will the, the nav bar be then? It's going to be one, uh, of the, one of the colors that we choose? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, okay. let's see. We've got the Adobe. Yeah, so let's do there. this one. Yeah. Okay. Well, how do I see the, there we go. There you go. Okay, so let's call this, which, which one of these colors should our header be? Should it be green? Hmm. No, oh, let's I like that one on the the far right. Like that, the blue. Like, the blue. Yeah. Let's okay. use that one. So okay. there's a the hex value. So let's call this uh, like what what variable name should we give this? Is this going to be like um... uh dark color? Okay. So we'll define a variable called like let's just call it dark, just dark, and the value is actually going to be like the uh, hex value dark. Cool. And then now that we have this variable, we can say background color is dark. And now anywhere else in our CSS where we want to use that, we can just say dark. Cool. Um, let's, so we've given it a background. By default, we won't really even see it because it doesn't have any height. So let's give the header, let's do a height of like, uh, tw 20 view height, 20 VH, okay. And let's give it a width of 100%. Should we set our background just to show that as well? We can just do that, like the generic yellow. Uh, sure, yeah. So we can do like the body has a background of yellow. Let's see. Okay. So that's working. And that's a nice blue color. Um, you'll, you'll also notice, though, that like there's like this white outline. You see that at the top? Mm -hmm. That's because the body and a lot of other elements um, have automatic margins, like based on the browser. So what we can also do is, um, let's just do like a reset. So let's say every single element margin is zero pixels and padding is zero pixels. So if there's any default styling by the browser, we're just like removing it there. And if we want any padding or margin, we'll, we'll add it ourselves. And that gives us a nice little header there. Cool. So instead of 20, let's try like 10. That's decent. Okay. And uh, yeah, let's try giving it that background color. So um, if we go back to our color wheel, we want this. So let's create a variable for that color. What should we call it? Uh, we're gonna call that like, I guess like main color, because that's right. like our center color. Uh, let's call it primary then. Yeah. Let's create a variable right, so for it. <laughs> primary. <laughs> and I don't think I'm sharing the uh, clipboard with you. Or actually, um, I, think well, I am. Oh, hold on, let me try. Let me try. You have to do, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to do Windows V instead of uh, that. Yeah, and then I'm just going to do hashtag. Oh, there we go. I, I really like that, uh, the the way it like puts that little square there. So yeah, it tells you, tells you what color it is. I think that's uh, built in. I don't think I have an extension that's doing that. I think it's built into uh, VS Code. Visual Studio, yeah. Yeah. All right, so we'll do that on body. Yeah, so give body a background color of primary. And hello, gifted fingers, what's up? Welcome to the stream. Uh, and Merchan, it's been a while, welcome back. And, think, and Vias, hello, hello. I think I was mentioning, like, I think it'd be cool, like, um, that we almost use, <laughs> this is gonna be like super technicolor. 
Um, this is not the prettiest colors so far, but I don't know, it's fine. Um, let's also go ahead and add in our fonts. So we decided we wanted uh, days one as our header font, so let's select this. We also wanted um, open sans as our body font, so let's put that in. Oh wait, what was that other one called? I think it let's see. Day, days one. Days one. Yeah, days one and uh, open sans. Yeah. So yeah. on on Google Fonts, we selected both of those, and this will actually give you a link tag for how to add them in. So we're going to add the fonts to our HTML, like right there above our CSS. And then now to actually use them, let's do this. So we'll say our body has a font family of open sans, and then let's target all of the headers. So do like h1, comma h2, comma h3, et cetera. Uh, Jimmy is, uh, is <laughs> saying these colors are ugly. I think, they, yeah, they, like they are. <laughs> seeing them bigger definitely made me realize that, like seeing them as like small little squares, I was like, all right, these look nice next to each other, but taking up the whole screen. They're very ugly. I think I, I honestly do just kind of want to do like a black nav bar at the top. Let's, and then, I don't know, we'll see. Um, but. I think we're just um, illustrating the... Uh, uh, we're illustrating variables. We're going to play with yeah. it. Definitely play with it. So we want all of our headers to have the days one font family. Um, and for let's now, put, let's put... Let's actually do put an H1 inside of the header. Save the emojis. There we go. <laughs> oh, it's like 1998. <laughs> it's so ugly. <laughs> uh, AJ saying Michigan Wolverines colors. That's what, it's, it's gonna look so much better when we're done. I promise, it's gonna look great. Um, okay. Uh, because we have that, let's actually make the header be a flex box too. So like the header will have this text um, directly in the center. Or actually, let's go back to our our, uh, our landing page. We are gonna have save the emojis there. Never mind. Let's not put it in the header. Well, we could put it like on the far left, like just save the emojis without, I think the emojis just almost like kind of real subtle. Okay. So let's actually do this. Uh, let's say the header has a uh, text align left. All right. Well, mm -hmm. what does that do for us? Okay. Very cool. But we do want it to be like vertically centered. So uh, let's actually make the header a flex box. Do uh, display flex. And that doesn't do anything. Um, but if you remember, a flex box by default has flex direction row, which means going from left to right. Um, but we want it to go top to bottom and then center it there. So let's do uh, flex direction column. Which shouldn't change anything, right? But I believe if we do justify content center um, inside the header, It should vertically center it. I might have that confused with the line items. Let's see. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> um, so now it's like vertically centered inside of the header. Um, and maybe we give, give it a little bit of uh, padding left. on the left. Yeah, well, we don't want the header to have padding. We want the H1 inside of the header to have padding, right? Oh, no. Let's do some padding. Yeah, just to say like uh, padding left uh, 10%. What do you think of that, Tony? 5%. 5%. Cool. Uh, let's also make the color... Uh, white. Yeah, white. Ooh, that's way too white. Let's make a, let's make a variable. <laughs> let's make like a, a light variable. Um, and what does 333 look like? It's dark. Try 888. E E E E. That's what we'll do. It's like eggshell. Sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, and so make that be our light color. Mistakes will be made. 
definitely. Uh, and while we're at it, let's make our dark just straight up be black. Or, or we could we could even do like a let's do like a three three three. Yeah, I I've kind of been a big fan of like no absolute um, black shades on things. Okay. <laughs> I think it kind of I don't know. There, there's a sort of cleanness to it. And our primary color is it's just so ugly, Tony. Let's can we find a different different one? Yeah, absolutely. I think I think <laughs> we might maybe try some like nice soft blue. Okay, let's do as like the primary color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think blue is kind of nice. Soft blue. Oh, how about that? Do we want like more of a? I think the more intense the colors, the uglier it's going to just look on the screen. <laughs> but I mean, at the same time, I don't know. Like, it's kind of so bad. I like it. Oh, <laughs> play with it, yeah. Uh, it's just kind of. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Yeah. What do we What do we think about this? Is this worse? I think so. I think we <laughs> we're not very good at picking colors. Um, well, I, I'm trying to think. Like, I like mm -hmm. I like this as a color scheme, but then at the same time, like just seeing it on the screen is kind of uh, it, it changes in a way. Yeah, let's look at it in colorblind mode. Eh. I don't know. I think I we we shouldn't focus on it now. We'll come back to it maybe at the end or something like that. But let's let's get this layout going because we definitely want to work on that. Um, what yeah, if we copy that for now? Yeah, let's make that our primary color. What do we got? Decent, Ugh, not as better. ugly, <laughs> not as ugly. Cool. Um, and so if we look at back at our, our mockup, so we do want save the emojis like dead center. So mm -hmm. let's. So right now we have the header that's up at the top. Let's create an element called like. Um, I was thinking we could do a main and put everything inside of that. Do a main, and then we could have like a title, and then inside of the main. Oh, yeah, and then we'll have like almost like a, another element under that set cards, and like those could all be like their own little row. Okay, so let's do a main element right there. Uh, Sean is asking, "Is this unicorn vomit scheme?" Yes, that's what we'll call it. <laughs> um, so we have our main. Uh, let's do like an H two, and this one will say save the emojis. see what we get okay right now because we have justify content space between it pushes save the emojis all the way to the bottom but we'll, we'll, the more the more content we get in there the more it'll push it up um, so that's great and actually if if we get rid of that right now like if we don't do uh, justify content space between we'll see that they're just like stacked on top of each other let's take a quick stretch Um, yeah, we do want this font to be a little bit bigger, but I guess below that is where we'll have the paragraph tag that says, every day, dozens of emojis are left forgotten and unused. Do you want to type that or should I type it? I'll type it. <laughs> are you still there, Tony? I'm sorry, I was eating a sandwich. Okay, you do your thing, man. <laughs> <laughs> every day emojis. Let's put this uh, right. Every day, dozens of emojis are left forgotten and unused. Together, we can help them thrive. All right, let's see what we get. Cool. <laughs> um, Let's actually, let's just like bump up the font size on the entire website. Um, I think right now, did we mess around with font size anywhere? No, I don't think so. We didn't, but it, it would appear like this H1 is like really big for whatever reason. Um, because it's an H1, maybe? Yeah. What if we did this? What if we made it an H2? 
It's a little bit smaller. It's cool. Um, so we have the main, let's, so because the way we're looking at this, because these two things seem to be like very, uh, small in the center, let's actually put them inside of their own container. Let's make like a section. And then the section has an H2 in it and the section has the paragraph inside of it. Um, because then we could give this section like a class name, um, I guess, or we could target it with uh, like nested styles. Um, but we give it a class name and then like make it have a maximum width so that it's like directly in the center and like actually wraps. Um, and yeah, let's give this a class name. What should we call this? Um, page header. Yeah, page header. Is, is there anything special we could do to make save the on its own line and emojis on another line without actually creating two like separate uh, HTML elements? Well, I think the thing is, so we'll, we'll mess around with the max width and then we can also do um, for the H2, you can have it so that, um, I forget, what, we'll, we'll figure out the properties, but there's a way to like spread out the text so it fills the whole line. Um, and if it's a maximum width, emojis will automatically go to the next line. So yes, I think we can do that. Um, okay, so now we have this page header class. And because, because this class is specific to um, the landing page, let's actually create a separate file for the landing page. So let's create a new file. Let's call it landing.scss. Um, the only issue here is we're going to need to update our script so that it automatically runs those. But now, because we have two files, we want both of those files to have access to these variables. So let's create um, a new file called like variables.scss. And all of our variables can go into this file. And then if we want them in here, we can do an import. Um, variables. Variables. I gotta look up the uh, this import syntax. Does that? Apparently, it still works. Cool. So now we have the variables in here. We also want to bring the variables into the landing page, and um, now we want to bring the landing CSS into the landing.html. So we're gonna bring in styles dot and landing.css. But you'll notice landing is not getting generated there. Um, I think one convention is to actually give this like an underscore on the name. Um, yeah, Meyer is mentioning make them partials. Let's look up at let's look at the um, um, SAS documentation on partials to see how that actually works. So you can create partial SAS files that contain little snippets of CSS that you can include in other SAS files. This is a great way to modularize your CSS and help th keep things easier to maintain. A partial is simply a SAS file named with a leading underscore. Uh, you might name it, name it something like partial.scss. The underscore lets SAS know that the file is only a partial file and it should not be generated into a CSS file. Cool. So by giving it that underscore, it makes it a partial. And actually what I'm thinking is, um, because index is already bringing in variables and landing will only ever be used with index, we don't need to import it twice. We do, however, need to start transpiling uh, landing.css. Um, let's look at node sass and see how they do that because we're now transpiling multiple things. Let's go to the command line interface. Um, output directory. I guess we could tell it to look at all of the things in the source folder and then output all of those things into the uh, CSS folder. Let's try it. So um, in our package.json, let's say 
scss goes into styles. And then let's restart our script. And yeah, um, main. So Meyer is mentioning we should uh, make uh, landing a partial two. The the only thing is I want to have multiple pages, and the landing page is going to be the only one that includes landing.scss. Um, Index won't include that. Let's see. Is there... Input... Output... Oh, um, or a directory. If the input is a directory, the dash dash output flag must also be supplied. So let's update that. So we'll have that and then output to styles. Yeah, so Ed is mentioning um, they usually import all of the files into main.css and then compile just that main.css. Um, does that still apply if you only want certain styles to apply to a certain page? Because um, the, the main thing to think about here is we're not doing a like single page application. We are going to have index.html and then we're going to have um, like donate.html and signup.html and each one of those are going to have their own separate styles. Yeah. Um, Let's see if this worked though. So if I restart that, that's there. And now, it's not outputting landing. Do we have to change the link uh, on the, uh, where well, it's? Well, the main thing I'm looking for is because I updated the uh, SAS script, I'm, I'm hoping that it looks at all of the files in SAS and converts them and puts them in the styles folder. But right now it's only converting index. It's not converting uh, landing. So I, I'm hoping there's some command that just looks at all of the SAS files that aren't partials and then puts out all of them, outputs all of them as um, into the styles folder. Watch a directory or file, output directory. R is recursive. Recursively watch files or directories. Let's try it. So watch recursively. Well, recursively would mean like nested directories, right? Let's see. Just run uh, this one task right now. Just make sure that this is working. npm run watch styles. Oh, it's because it's empty. Maybe uh, one one style we wanted to do was like uh, page header has I don't know max width of. Yeah, change change all the H ones to like all have the light text. Or just all text to really have the light text right now. I figured it out though. It's because landing was totally empty. <laughs> like there That's was. What I'm saying, like, <laughs> we're, we're used that to like test. Yeah. So, but I, but the moment I put stuff in there, landing popped up in the styles. Okay. So that okay. should be working. Cool. Yeah. Okay. False alarm. <laughs> um. But. That, that's technically working because now a uh, page header has a max width of 30%. Um, but we do want the um, uh, main itself to be a flex box that will then center those things. But let's before we get any further, let's split some things up because um, I, I like what people are mentioning in the chat. Like you have a main file that you import things into. Um, 
which I think is what we're going to need to do because um, right now we have like these, uh, like this is a style that should apply everywhere, absolutely. And then uh, this body style is a style that should be applied everywhere. And I guess the, the header is too because the header is gonna appear on every single page. Would that be like something we can include in the variables thing as well? Like well, we well have... I was thinking like a separate file called like um, header dot uh, well, a partial that's like header dot scss. But I think I'm gonna leave it there for now. And then all of our custom styles for landing are gonna go in here. Okay, but let's say this. Let's say uh, main itself is a flexbox. So give main um, target main. And then we'll say uh, width is 100%. And then we don't have to call flexbox again because it's already been declared flexbox. Well, is has main already been declared a flexbox? I don't think it has. In index? Mm -mm. We only oh, did no. uh, so we have body is a flexbox. The header is a flexbox. We're gonna make main also a flexbox. Okay. So yeah. So display flex. Display. Um, and then justify content center. Cool. So that put that there. Um, let's, for right now, let's just like, let's make the, uh, let's make prim primary white too. Okay. And what if we do make this just black? I actually like that a little bit more. Um, okay, but we were, we were mentioning we want, we're trying to match this this style here. We want like really big text. All right, so we need uh, also like a little HR between them. Okay. The B and the, the but I guess the, yeah, so for page header, let's, let's just give it a larger font size. So like uh, font size, 3M, maybe? Okay. Okay, it's a little bit better. And then now we want all of this to be in all capital letters, right? Yeah, so we'll do text transform. Yeah, so on the page header. Well, actually, we want page header. Um, we only H want the H1. H2. H2 of that. Yeah, to be uh, transformed. So we can use the nested styling. So page header H2. Okay. H2. And then we'll just bring those guys over here for the font size. Extras. Okay. See what we get. Whoa. <laughs> um, and let's actually do this. So let's make the, the H2 be larger, but not the text. That's pretty close to what we had, right? Mm hmm. And then we also want the. Um, the P tag to be a little bit larger, but let's make it, um, I don't know, like eight, uh, two M. So do let's target the P tag in there. And font size is two M. Every day, dozens of emojis are left forgotten and unused. Together, we can help them thrive. <laughs> um, Right, and you were mentioning if we do like a little HR. Yeah, just uh, in between. Kind of separate the, yeah, in right between. there. Let's do HR. Okay. Um, it's there. If we look at our our mockup. And I think we could probably do like like we could probably say like uh, like ninety percent of this particular div. Uh, instead of full, yeah, let's do it. So let's yeah. say the HR width is 90%. HR, not H1. Oh, great. Sorry. Uh, HR is width. Uh oh. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Okay, go ahead. Width is 90. Uh, to control HR, is it font size? Um, I don't think so. I think we're going to actually have to change maybe the height. Um, okay, so it is 90%, but 
but it's not centered. Um, can you do a text align center on this HR? Yeah, I could have sworn you use like a, like basically text stuff to edit it. Yeah, no, there. That, did, that didn't do it. Look at the I HR. Think we have to justify content because it looks like it's shorter on the right. Um, very curious. So this does have justify content center. Um, I guess we want main to have text align center as well. Let's go ahead and set that. Okay. But the HR is. Um... Let's let's put let's take away that uh, percent and see if it changes. So yeah, see. It's yeah, so it's making right. it, it's making it ninety cent. Um, interesting. Yeah. So Ed is mentioning. I think it's easier to use after to set border instead of using HR. So instead of having like a separate element there, we could actually say like after the H2, it has a border. Mm -hmm. Let's try to do that. So because that should be just the text underneath it. So let's not do an HR. Let's say, uh, and this is a pseudo selector. So H2 after, and let's say uh, border bottom. Um, well, maybe border will work. Let's just try border. Yeah, border. And let's do like two pixels solid, and we'll use our dark uh, variable. What do we get? It's in there somewhere. <laughs> The only thing is we can't see it. Um, not new style rule, but hover active class. We could also do a a border a border bottom. Um, Oh, cool, yeah. So uh, Ed is mentioning how we could do this with um, the um, with with SAS. <laughs> so nest the H2 itself. So we could do, oh, uh, yes, yeah, so we could do a, a nested selector. So this is like SAS syntax. So you say this. So this is an after selector for it. But we also need to give it content so it actually shows up. Um, content is nothing. Okay, I still don't see it. Am I, am I seeing that right in the chat? Like content is just an empty string? Mm. Hello world. Still not seeing it. Let's see how it gets generated. So if we go into landing. Oh, I don't even see it. Maybe we're not doing it right. We're like, this is this is an outdated version because it still has the HR. Um, status, undefined variable dark. What? Oh, it could be, okay. Uh, we actually do need to import the variables in here, that's why. Variables.css. There we go. Okay. <laughs> no, notice uh, it's it's now showing up. Um, but this is because is this because I'm thinking the so. Let's see what we got. We have page header. After the H two is to the right. Um, we might need to do border bottom. Try border top. 
border top. We could actually just do border bottom of the H2, and that would create a line underneath it. Um, like, if we just directly put this there, instead of doing the, the after selector. Oh, we got to do the... Oh, d bottom instead of top. Yep. But it doesn't, like, shrink in. Well, it sort of does. Well, like it, it's, it's responsive, but it's only responsive as like that changes. Yeah, it, it responds to the size of emote. Oh, I don't like that. <laughs> oh. Somebody help us out in the chat, please. Um, so the after selector was bas was putting it um, on the end of the S there. This is like decent. Okay, beaten egg says make after absolute and put it uh, to the bottom of the H2. So we do absolute positioning, but then will it respond? Like if the size of the page changes, will it just be stuck there? Let's, let's well, I think see. it's absolute positioning relative to the div that it's in. Position. The elements in. Absolute. Oh, sorry, just border. Now it's way up there. Is that is that it? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not like that little dot. Uh, oh, and hey, Autumn, welcome to the stream. It's a combination of after and border bottom. I mean, I know we can use HR and do it. I feel like HR is, like, people don't use uh, HRs anymore. It's like a, it exists, but, like, you can do it with CSS. I think, I think we're just going to stick with this for right now. Let's, let's okay. stick with that. <laughs> I, I, I know, like, if we did HR, um, yeah, well, HR doesn't exist anymore. We'll move okay, um, cool. So um, one thing I want to do right now is, um, so as we, like, resize the page, like, things are, like, getting weird, what I want to do is make the, the font size relative to the width of the page. So, like, here, like, for all of our fonts right now, we're using Ms. So we're saying, like, 3M, 2M, um, yeah, the header's just there. But if we make it all relative to the width, it should stay where we put it. So, like, let's say um, font size is two view width. Too much. One view width unit. Okay. Then uh, no matter how size, it just, like, gets bigger and smaller. I do, like, two. And then we can go from there. So if we make this two, then we can actually reduce the number of Ms that we used in, um, in our landing. So this will be like two and one. Yeah. And then now it actually is just like relative to how big the page is. That's gonna look horrible on mobile, but we can, we can make it a little bit better. Oh yeah, we'll, we'll fix it. It'll be <laughs> super responsive, amazing yeah. app. Okay, I'm getting all kinds of suggestions in the, tat, uh, in the chat. So we would have done relative position with top and left. We do an HR with a 90% width and auto. That would probably do it, because earlier we didn't try messing with the, the margins. Um, there's so many things we could do. <laughs> all right, I'm going to try it. Should we use an HR, Tony? Final call up. Should we use an HR? I like using HR because it's easy. Like, I know, like, <laughs> I've seen people do, like, the bottom things and whatnot, and I, I like having nice little division things. Okay, there. so let's try it, though. If we do width 90% and margin... Auto. Oh, well, and then we get rid of the border bottom. And then let's uh, do like uh, sixty percent. Wait, what? You you got a space there? <laughs> okay. Wow. How do we make it um, thicker on top again? Let's see. Uh. Um, height. I think. It, Try, no. Try try doing a border top, like it like. Point two M or something. Is that a thing you can do? Yeah. All right. Try uh try one M. Try pixels. Where are you looking this up online? Well, I, yeah, yeah. I'm looking at a, <laughs> uh, 
whole thing. It's mm. doing try, nothing. Try two pixels solid. I think we have to say what type of thing it is. There it is. Whoa. I think, I think we got there. <laughs> now, that's technically not, like, responsive, so we could try using M. Uh, what do you mean, responsive? Like, it stays two pixels, so, like, two pixels, it, like, as it gets... Oh, 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 oh I see. We could do, we could do, like, view width also. Well, way too much. Because the, the font is responding to the size of the view width? Yeah, so try 0.5. Oh, it may, it may not go any smaller. Try 0.3. 2. Oh, 0.1. Yeah. No, too, that's too small. Okay, 0.2. <laughs> that's, I can live with that. Yeah, but it should respond. Yeah, yeah. Looks great. Save the emojis! <laughs> Um, okay. Thanks, Thomas McLean, for the, uh, for the suggestion on Margin Auto. Apologies to everyone else for not, like, honestly, like, reading what you're trying to tell me to do with After just seems very confusing. Like, I don't know how it actually do those things. <laughs> I think um, pseudo-selectors just get weird uh, sometimes. I, I'm not, I'm not that comfortable with them. Um, and Autumn is asking, uh, did I switch editors? Yes, I started using VS Code probably, like, uh... Three, three, four months ago. No, no, no three, three months ago. And hello, Syafic. Hello from Malaysia. Welcome, welcome. I'll be right back. Okay, Tony will be right back. Um, yeah, let's take a quick break. How long have we been streaming? Like two hours. No, an hour and a half. <laughs> and we have gotten barely anything done. Well, I think, I think one of the things that I remember, though, like we're doing this from scratch. We're not using Bootstrap, so. Yes, yes. That's part of this whole thing. It's part like, of it. Uh, I will return. All right, see you soon. And hello, Young Galaxy. Welcome to the stream. Um, those of you that are just joining, this, where is it? This is what we're building. We just have like a basic landing page. We're working with like layout and different fonts and like trying to get everything the way we want it. <laughs> yeah, uh, Jimmy, I think Jimmy suggested um, margin auto on the HR earlier, too. <laughs> uh, Fernando mentions, hello, I found your channel because of coding train. <laughs> Been having a lot of fun here. Appreciate it. Um... Yes, coding train is great, super fun. It's like big inspiration for for myself doing this um, like live streams all the time. Um, let's just pull up this page, coding train. Yeah. Let's find some. <laughs> I'm not gonna play that, but yeah, tons of cool videos on coding train. Doesn't doesn't his theme song like it was originally gonna be coding rainbow, but there's like a copyright thing. Yes, I th are we going to get copyright tagged for saying the words coding, coding rainbow? I don't know. I don't, but, I don't <laughs> think so, but like, like the, in the theme song, it's like there's like a blank spot where they're saying the name of the thing. And it's... Well, that's, that's the old theme song. So he has a new theme song that's, that's coding train specific. Oh, okay. But, but the old one was uh, coding rainbow, which yeah. was uh, based off of reading rainbow, which I used to watch all the time on PBS. What was the name of the guy that posted it? Le LeVar Burton. He is from, from Star Trek. Star Trek, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Reading Rainbow. <laughs> um, oh, cool. Ed, Ed just shared a code pen. I'll pull up Discord really quick. It's like, sometimes, so I, I definitely, we've talked about it in the past. I want I want to build an app where you all can, like, maybe modify the code that I'm working on in real time and like share it with me. Um, because it's so hard, you know, you're, you guys are trying to describe things in the chat and like sometimes I figure it out, but sometimes it's just like so hard to get to. <laughs> okay, so we've got save the emojis. Ah, okay. Position absolute, left zero, right zero, bottom zero. And so um, that takes it, because the way we were doing it, it was showing up right here, 
but by absoluting it, that pushes it below it. And then we still have to do the margin to make it in the center. Very cool. Thanks for that, Ed. Jiraj <laughs> uh, is mentioning um, this channel is without space melons. I do have space behind me. But yeah, if you, if you watch Coding Train, uh, Dan will uh, eat uh, melons that blend in with his green screen behind him, so they're like invisible. Which is pretty cool. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Um, and Christian's mentioning, yeah, we need more melons. Um, okay, I think that was a good break. Yeah, I, I still think you should just wear like a green shirt so you're just a floating head. Well, so I, I got a, a green cape for my birthday, but I now actually use a, a blue screen instead, um, mainly so that I can wear t-shirts that have like green plants on them. Um, but yes, I should get like a blue a blue cape now. A blue turtleneck. <laughs> exactly. So you're like just straight up floating head. Okay. Uh, Young Galaxy just added some CSS. I think it looks display block, height two pixels, background color, content, space. Interesting. I don't know if I like our font now that I see it like in yeah, all caps. I was, I was going to mention, let's choose a different header font. Cause yeah, this, I'm going to pull one up right now. Okay, because this is like Comic Sans-esque in a way. All right, what, our, exactly, our, but... I like our body font. Uh, no, that's, yeah, con it's Open it's Sans. Open it's Sans, good. right? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, so let's see. Open Sans <laughs> pairs good with... It's like it's like uh, you're in the grocery store and you see things like wine and or cheese and it says pairs good with whatever. Mm. Um, yeah, so if we look at Open Sand, is that what you're looking at now? Mm -hmm. um, let's pairs, use Railway. Pairs good with... Railway. Which one's Railway? Can we go to it? Yeah, and I think... Do you, if you do the import, does it pull up all the weights? Because I know like different fonts have like... It some, does. Some yeah, so you want to use like black? Yes. Okay, so now yeah, let's update our let's get rid of uh, days one. We're just gonna have open open sands and railway. I think I think once we change that, and we get some like kind of more monochromatic bluish color schemes. It's gonna look more professional because right now it looks <laughs> all sorts of crazy. It looks like a kindergartner made it. Um, okay, so our header font is now gonna be railway, um, but. I think uh, you I think use you numbers for the uh, font weight. So font weight. And we'll use, hold on. Well, I, I think I could, could I say something like black? Uh, no, 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 because the font weight is uh, is like a number based system. It's like 100. Mm. So uh, like 900. No, I don't it's think not that's one railway. So we want, we want this. Oh, railway. Uh, I think we might have to add it black. That's what that's what I was saying. So yeah, we add black, and then if you click that uh, add to our font thing, here? it should say, click down here, or I'll do it. Um, customize. Oh, there we go. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Black nine hundred. Load time moderate. So all we have to do is add forty comma nine hundred to the to the when we're bringing it in. Mm-hmm. Oh, forty. Yeah, four hundred. Oh, four hundred, nine hundred, and then now in our CSS, uh, I made it so that font weight is nine hundred. Are you ready? Oh. Oh, so much <laughs> more professional. Muy bueno. <laughs> um, actually, let's make this font size a little bit smaller, just because it like it is in the header. Um, that's that would be the header font here. Let's say like font size is half an M. Yeah, I think we could w make the uh, nav bar a little smaller as well. Cool. Um, it is seven view it height. It is based on view height. Try seven. It's a little better, but the only thing is like the smaller it gets, like the tinier it gets. Oh boy. <laughs> I think it's fine. It's fine. 
come back to that. We'll come back to it. Okay, so we're, we're, we're doing decent. So we have our nav bar. We have our little center area text. Uh, let's put those three column things below it. So we want a section that has like a sign up box, a donate box, and a stats box. And each one of those is going to link to a separate page. I think we can use like some font awesome icons in there. Okay. Um, we will definitely do that. So in our HTML, we have a section which is the page header. Let's have another section which is, um, we'll, we'll call it, I don't know, like page uh, box, page, uh, link boxes, link buttons. Link item. cards. Link cards, I like it. Because I kind of I kind of think view them as like card elements. Okay. And then inside of there, we'll have three. We'll have one for sign up. So let's create like three divs right now. Ooh. Well, and I guess inside of it, we could do like. Um... Can you help me out with copying and pasting? Oh uh, yeah, I'll, I'll get it get it for you. But we do want let's do like an h3 inside of it that just says like sign up and i think uh we'll do like a background color donate and stats every day okay but right now this if we look at the element inspector this is our main area and by default, a flex box has uh, a flex direction of row, which goes across. But we want this to be flex correction um, column because we want it to go down so that sign up, donate, and stats are below that. So for the main, let's do flex direction column. Flex direction column, got it. Uh... Great. Um, now we have justify content center, but, but now but since we're going column, we also want to do align items center. There we go. Cool. And then um, we want these to be, I guess, like three across. We can create space around maybe? well this is now uh, another a nested section so we could make this a flex box or we could take all of the divs inside of it and make them like display inline block so that way um they go side by side instead of on the next line mm -hmm. um also we could maybe come up with some sort of like a uh, card class Yeah, I, th I think uh, having the card class would be good because we could reuse that on uh, the other ones. Other pages, yeah. So let's do this. Um, in our index, let's create a class for card. That's a card. Yeah, and uh, let's say display is, like, do we want it to be inline block? Yes, inline block. <laughs> hey, Rodrigo, welcome to the stream. Uh, display inline block. Um, do we want to give it like a an outline? Like a black outline? Yeah, j just just to at least illustrate. I I mean I was kind of playing around with um, gradients before where we have like white at the top and there's actually like zero opacity on the bottom of the like the background itself. Uh yeah, so basically it would like start from white and completely blend into like whatever the background image or color is. Um, but I think for, for now, like, just to practice with it, we can just do, like, a quarter. Um, yes, but let's actually do... Uh, oh, oh, just a sec. Sorry, don't touch my mouse. <laughs> okay. Um, we almost closed my streaming software. That would not have been good. Okay. Um, let's do outline. So outline is an actual CSS property we can specify instead of border. And I believe um, it doesn't add, like, width or height to the element, which is good. Uh, let's do... Uh, one pixel solid dark. I think, yeah, we could do solid dark. I think it defaults on black. Okay, but if we change our dark color later, um, we get, well, we haven't added it to it. So inline block, outline is that. So now that we have this card class, let's give each one of these divs a class of card. Okay, I was kind of thinking... Uh... Like our headers are like inside headers. that little thing, that mm -hmm. little. Uh... 
inside the car, do you mean? Well, can you pull up the, uh... Uh, the, the, this. Yeah. Oh, that's so, what like, you wanted. Yeah, we can kind of either have it below or even have, like, a mini, um, kind of like the same way we have the header. Like, I almost see. like a little header that is on top of the card. Yeah, but what I'm thinking is, okay, so if we look at some of our other, of your other mock-ups, um... Are we using that card really anywhere else? And I, not necessarily. I mean, we could, we could though. I mean, there's nothing stopping us <laughs> to, from deviating from the mock-up. Right. Um, but because because what I'm thinking is like this isn't necessarily part of the card. It's just like um, a header that's on top of the card. Right. Yeah, I think that would make more sense. And then like within our card, we'll have like a nice uh, icon. Okay. And then maybe like when you hover over it, like the icon kind of expands a little bit or something. Yeah. Okay. Um, just trying to think. So won't necessarily have this as a class of card, but like we'll have divs, but then inside of it, we'll have a div that has a class of card. And inside of here, there's going to be um, an icon, an icon or an image for it. Um, for now, just put like a little pound sign or star or something. Do an emoji. Pencil for signing up. Cool. Yes. So sign up. Donate. Maybe it would make more sense to use emojis for the for these <laughs> instead of icons. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so we'll do like money flying away, and um, I think there's a chart. Stats. Cool. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> nice. Um, and so each of these divs, we do want those to be side by side. So uh, we could say. Let's do this. We'll say link cards um, will be display flex. Okay. So let's do that in our landing page. So we have uh, link cards. This will be display flex. Flex direction is row? Uh, yeah, but you can leave that off because that's default. So let's see what we get just by adding that. Boom, that's pretty freaking awesome. Um, and then we can do um, uh, justify content space around. Is this the one that we talked about last time? Yeah, space like, around. Yeah, this, this space around well. versus uh, space between. Um, I guess the only thing here is we need to make sure that it has a width to it. Uh, take a quick stretch. Yeah, there's some suggestions in the chat about like formatting of different things. Cool. Um, but I believe the main section is 100%, and then this section doesn't have a width. So we want link cards to be like uh, 60 or 70% width, right? Because if we look at our mock up, it doesn't take up the full width, but it does do that. Let's do like width 70%. I keep thinking, like, if we used Bootstrap, we would have been done by now. <laughs> like, oh, probably. <laughs> like, I feel like this is, I mean, this is taking us an inordinate amount of time just to do the most basic 20%. thing. 20%. Uh, no, uh, like 60%. Yeah, like that. Yeah? Yeah, and I think, like, if it was on mobile, like, because that, that's what I was just thinking, like, if I, if this was on mobile, I would want the, the logic to make it to where, like, these things oh, are... one column? Yes, exactly. Yeah, and so I mean, honestly, because we are focusing on styles, we could just do like media queries. So like on mobile, it actually um, uh, switches to be a single column. Yes, exactly. I don't know. Okay, but let's do this. Um, let's change our class name to be emoji card. Because this, I mean, it's probably only going to use this in one place, but maybe we won't. And let's just like, for one, let's give it some padding. So let's do like padding is like three ends. So like 
Yeah, okay, beautiful. And then the font size here, also like huge, five, okay. <laughs> yeah. Might be a little too much. A little less padding. What do you think, Tony? Should there there should be spaces between these boxes? Yeah, there right? should be spaces between, but I like uh, I like the size there. Okay. So um, link cards. This is is this the one that has width? Yes. Yeah, so this is width sixty percent. And then each of the divs. Actually, we didn't style the divs directly. Um, we could give the divs a little bit of uh, margin, actually. I think there should be like a little space between um, that paragraph and the divs. Yeah, so we can do we can do some uh, margin around the um, the divs themselves. So did we give them a class? We didn't, but we could say like link cards div. So like the div that's immediately that are immediately children of link cards. Call that card holder. Um, sure. Or card container. Yeah. Yeah. Then. And then a uh, card container. Uh, margin or padding? It would be uh, margin, right? Because padding is like just space between them. Well, it's padding is like inside the element? Yeah. Margin 1M. Cool. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah, and so uh, Young Young Galaxy is mentioning justify content space between on the parent. I think we have that. So our, our parent is, um, oh, instead of space around, space between. That would stretch them completely out. Oof, it get, it goes uh, not centered though. I think we're gonna go, we're gonna go with that, and then um, the children have that. Cool. This, this is decent, Tony. Um, yeah, I, I, I would say like uh, it shouldn't be hard to just like have some logic to like say like if this if the screen size like enters like a certain size, then it just like starts making those guys turn into a uh, single columns. Single column. Uh, let's let's do that. I mean, why not? Like um, before we build other pages, let's make this thing like look good on mobile too, because we need to save the emojis no matter where we are: desktop, mobile, laptop, um, tablet. Cool. Yeah, tablet tablets <laughs> need the emojis. All right, so let's put let's give some margin top on this this section here so that it pushes down from the header, and then we'll do the same thing on this links section, right? So, page header, let's give it a margin top of um, I don't know one m, two m, give it two m. Nice. And then, uh, is it link cards? Yeah, link cards. Let's I give think it, 1M. Or yeah, margin one. top of 1M. M, okay. Okay, decent. Um, do we want to go ahead and grab a, a, a background image? Yeah, yeah, we could use, yeah. I let's, think that'd be perfect. Let's do that. Use one um, of these, uh, like, kind of forest landscape looking. Like, I like that one. Like on the right there. This one? Yeah. I can just use that one for now. Let's see. Cool. And I, um, I know um I already mentioned it, but like I want to be able to have like our one of our colors, preferably not a gross one, um kind of overlay <laughs> over this image. So we have like this almost as like a texture underneath the image so that mm, way we can always have our colors be the dominant thing. So yeah, and so I guess there's multiple ways to do it. Like we can do a um, background image in CSS, and that could set the background image of like the the body, right? Mm -hmm. um, but if we do that, then to be able to apply like a color on top of it, not sure how exactly we would. There's do that. different ways to do it. Um, what do you, how do you think we would do it? Um, so I've seen. Some people just kind of have like, uh, 
another div on top of it and kind of play with like the opacity but i think yeah we uh, could do like we could do it like an absolutely positioned div that just takes up the whole page but it's all the way behind everything and has some opacity on it yeah but i i kind of want it to be let me see if i can find something real quick um well yeah because because what i'm also thinking is okay like what if we just throw like the image right here so image source is this thing Okay, now we have this giant image, but everything's below it. That's not great. But um, if we give this a class of like BG image, then we could um, put it behind everything. So background image has um, position absolute. Well, oh, not that absolute. Top zero, left zero. But now everything else is below it. Um, so it could have like a Z index of like negative one. What will that do? Yes, now everything is on top of it. Um, so that's great. And then give it like a width of 100% and a height of auto, because that way it automatically resizes. I guess the only thing is um, the smaller it is, then we don't see it. Right. But, but by doing this, we could actually create a div with like a very similar style, and that div would then have opacity on it, um, so we could actually like see the text on top of it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think of like I, I've seen like different ways of doing it. I'm trying to think like what even. I know, there's there's a cool CSS uh, tricks on a full screen background image, full yeah perfect full page background image. You could do it with CSS. Um, yeah, so this is kind of what we're doing. So we have our main element, position fixed. Top fifty, and the image itself. Let's let's do this style because if we do this, then the image will always be like take up the full full of the background image. Let's do this. So let's have a div. Class is BG, and then in our landing, we actually want to do uh, class BG and then BG image. See what this gives us. Cool. I guess the other thing is we want to z-index this. Okay, I'm seeing some different uh, tricks right now where you do like a color tint. Oh, I'm not even looking at the image. I'm looking at this. Okay. <laughs> but now it's it's full screen and it's background. Okay. But I guess the other thing I was uh, mentioning is um, now if we put a div in there and give it a background color on top of the image, so like we could say uh, there's the image, and then there's a div, and we give this a class of like BG color. I'm getting probably lots of suggestions in the chat that I'm not looking at just yet, but let's say B, oh. And because we're in SAS, by the way, we can do this. And then um, let's just, I gave it a class, BG color. Um, again, this has all of the same attributes, but in this case, the background color could be like RGBA. Zero, 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 which makes it black, and then like 0.5% opacity. Yes. Right, so I've, I'm going <laughs> to send you a link on the. I think this will help us for blending. But what I've just done was um, this. So, do you see that, Tony? Yes, I li I like it, but <laughs> it's it's sort of it's 
we can make it we can make it better we definitely could yeah, but, what, yeah, but basically yeah. what i've done is the image is there and then there's a colored div on top of it that has some transparency but actually you could just do like background color is our do we have a light variable i think we do yeah but then opacity is uh 0.5 yeah 0.2 but i think i think we're, we're more using like the opacity it's not really doing a whole lot of like blending yeah and i think okay. like with what i'm showing you uh it, it, it's perfect for what we're trying to do. Cool. So let's see what Tony has sent me. Uh, and actually, I'm going to hide my screen real quick. <clears throat> okay. Basics of CSS blend modes. Interesting. Well, see, okay, here's here's the thing, though. <laughs> because um, I'm using this style of, like, elements instead of using background image, Technically, I guess it could work. I could give uh, the div a background image with multiply. I, I think we don't have to necessarily even think about background image. This is just using like uh, the see it, like the blend mode, which I did, didn't know about. Okay, so do you like multiply, or we're just gonna plus? Yeah, around multiply with is perfect one? because, like, okay. for example, like in Photoshop or something, when you're multiplying, like that color is like it, it's almost like the dark colors of your image are being superimposed onto the new color. So basically like, I, I guess the best way to think about it is like in the example image, we, we want the background image to be red. And it's almost like all of our light colors are suddenly turned to red. Mm. So it's more of a, a way of actually having this color take over. Okay. So like this is like kind of is, is a better way of using uh, color than say like using opacity because we have like, a true representation of the color we're using rather than like trying to mess around with it. Let's see if this works. So what I'm trying to do is basically we, we have a div inside this BG class and then I created this div and gave it a class image. And now image, we're going to make the URL be this and have the multiply on there. Whoa. <laughs> uh, it's it's, it's kind of like tiling. Right. Uh, oh, oh, that's true. Uh, so we actually have to do background image color, uh, cover. Maybe not. Uh, no repeat. I don't know where that goes, though. I have to look up the syntax for it. Okay. Um, CSS background image. Well, not that. Let's get the CSS tricks. Gradients, background images, uh, bottom, center, no repeat. I think we want something like center, try, center. Try, try doing background size and putting cover. Um, as a separate property? Yeah, so like uh, for our background image. So background size, cover, and then background position, we'll say center. Yeah, I think there's a way to specify it on background image as kind of like a shorthand, but hopefully that does it. So let's see what we get. Yes, in a way, I think it's working. Okay, so we don't want to back, we don't want to multiply it with red. We want to multiply it with like light. No, 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 we want it to be, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I guess we could change all of our other color and our font stuff to like white or something. Maybe mm -hmm. add like a tiny subtle drop shadow in case like the image would be really light. Okay, let's see. So in our landing SCSS, um, everything inside of main should have a font color of white, right? Right. So color white. Or light, yeah. Okay. Now we can't see the outlines of the cards. Should the cards be outlined in white? Sure. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, <laughs> yeah, why not? Let's see. Um, we actually defined that in our index, though. What color are we filtering over the? Uh, I just did, I did light. What color? I think that's supposed to be like white right now. Let's try using like the dark color and see if it actually works. Dark. Yes. <laughs> Uh, try green. Yeah. Oh wait, it's not a variable. Green. 
interesting. I, yeah, I think it looks kind of weird. Um, <laughs> let's try if, a, if a background of... image with more than one color because this thing is kind of mostly green. I think it'd be right. okay. something with the sky. So let's try. I like this... that waterfall. This one? Or doesn't have much sky. Let's search for rainforest sky. How about this one? Yeah, no. that's. Well, it's not much of a, a rectangle though. I mean, I think it'll still stretch out. I think. That's true. What about this one? No. This one? Let's use that one down here. Show me which one. Uh, this one right here. Oh yeah, it's great. Love it. Okay. This is uh, the natural habitat of the emojis. <laughs> this is where they all come from. Um, okay, so that's the URL we're gonna use. What happens? Ooh, decent. So right now um, it has no multiply. So what what color are we gonna multiply it with? Under under background image, can you just try, instead of like get rid of that image tag and just put image? I mean, what, put background. Like just get rid of the image thing. That? No, no, no. Like where like where it says image, just say background. Oh, here. Oh, well, um, no, because the way I have it is um, this is the thing that's positioned, and then we're setting the image of this. Oh, okay. are, you, are you thinking we need to set the image of this? No, I... I, I... No, ignore me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to like, think yeah. of different, different things. Okay, so if we go back to how we're multiplying... So there's multiply... Uh, screen, overlay, darken. Yeah, these are all like different sort of uh, blend methods. Okay, let's do and they darken do different effects. with... Do we have a dark? That's our black color. Okay, that Just... really, really darkens it. Darken it with white. I mean, then we could make this black. Like, try try using it like with um, a, just like a light blue. Like, light blue is a CSS co uh, color. And then we'll like add it as a variable, but white, yeah. light blue. Interesting. The white still seems kind of hard to read. Let's say if we if we go into colorblind mode. Yeah, the white just does not have enough contrast against that background. Well, that's that's one of the things. It's like using the different blend modes will kind of produce different effects. So we have darken if we do multiply. Ooh, that might have done it. <laughs> Tony, the, what are we up? doing? What are we doing with our lives? Well, we're just we're trying some different stuff. Uh, I think with the white text. Um, one of the things that helps usually um, is having some sort of like drop shadow. That's true. We could do like an outline on on the text or drop shadow. Oh no no no! The outline would be terrible. See like <laughs> so like my in, the theory behind that is. Like the um, if you have like a simple outline and like almost have like the text like hollow, that's kind of fine. But like when you add an outline to it, it's almost like you're fighting against the font designer. Mm. Like the specific weights of and this is like real pretentious like typography stuff. But like the specific weights of the font were like designed accordingly. And like when you add an outline, it's like you're kind of messing with some of the stuff. And it's more obvious when you have like thicker outlines on a thick font. Well, like, yeah, what if what if we make these these cards actually just have a light background so they're not you can't even see through them. And yeah, then like, they, and perfect. then uh, Young Galaxy is mentioning give them a box shadow too. So let's do that. So we could do that gradient thing where they have like that solid uh, like white gradient at the top and then it's like opacity 0 on the bottom. So that mm -hmm. And then um, mentioning box shadow, how does box shadow work? Uh, you have you have to like set the variable of like how big the shadow is, what color it is, like what angle it's coming at. There's like generators let's, for it. Let's look at uh, CSS box shadow. 
It's kind of like uh, Noob Quest noodling around. <laughs> Basically, it's, we've just spent two hours like barely getting a landing page going, but we're, we're, learning, we're learning SAS. We're yeah, learning. I was going to say, like that, that's what we get for doing everything from scratch. Yeah, okay. Um, horizontal offset, vertical offset, blur radius, spread radius, and the color. So this produces kind of like that fat. Right. Which and is like, pretty much what we want. Yeah. And like I said, like there's um the same way we use like the gradient tool before, like there's other things like in the browser like change parameters and then like it'll generate it for us. Ooh, that's not that great. <laughs> <laughs> um let's let's do it relative though, because we are doing pixels, so Right. And see and see like Wow. <laughs> Yeah, like a lot of this is like noodling anyway because it's like you spend the, a lot of time like coding the actual like it's it's real easy to say like all right we have our our divs they're there but it's like how do you make them look good? Mm. Um, one. Yeah, that's really ugly. <laughs> and it might be better to use like uh, maybe uh, more of a gray rather than the. Let's see. So yeah, we have our we have our dark color. Um, well, actually, what if we give it a box shadow? Of, well, if we give it a box shadow of light, it should just yeah, it's gonna be like blurry. Yeah, yeah. Blurry. That's how like um, you're really fancy with CSS. You can do like those really amazing, almost like a, a glowing text effect. Yeah. Uh, Amy says she likes the noodling. Let's just pull up some images of noodles real quick. This is what we're doing today. <laughs> this is, this is I, you know what? New I'm quest gonna... noodles. I, I, I'm gonna do a picture of you just like with your hands in the air. That's gonna be the background image of, of our the YouTube thing for today. It's just like a bunch of pasta <laughs> behind you. No, noob Quest, aka Noodle Quest. Noodle Quest. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, let's find a, a box shadow generator. CSS box shadow generator. Here we go. Yeah, and you can even change the angle. It's oh, beautiful. yes. Uh, no thanks. Uh, <laughs> no, that's that makes sense. Okay, so try, like try, try it like top down, like the ninety degree. Boom. No, I guess not ninety degree. Like make 90s. that white arrow all the way up. Actually, no. You're right. You're right. You're right. So on top. No, I I, I was wrong. I was ninety. Wrong. Ninety. There you go. Okay. Distance. Ooh. Uh, keep the distance kind of tight. Like right there. Very maybe five. Mm -hmm. and blur. It's like a tiny. Oh, see, the thing is, like, the more the blur is, like, the more subtle it is, which I actually do like. But it it starts to spread it out, like, in a wider thing. I think about there, about there. Yeah, yeah see, like fifteen. Yeah, and then okay. you can kind of see like where you want the uh, opacity. I would say probably about. Huh? Maybe like 0.6, just like a little bit more. Okay. Optional settings, spread. Wow. <laughs> no, no spread. Okay, that's very subtle, but I like it. Let's try it. It's just kind of cool too, because like, like if you're say like you're doing the mock-up like I was doing in Photoshop or something, you can take a lot of these things that you do in Photoshop and like find ways to convert them straight into the CSS so you are perfectly recreating those Google styles. Chrome just crashed. It did not like that, that box shadow generator. Uh, restore, go away box shadow generator. Um, what have we done? Oh, there we go. <laughs> okay, there's a box shadow on it now. It's very subtle, very, very but subtle. It, Kind of gives it like a little bit more of a yeah. What if you don't put it back? Yeah. Um, while we're here, let's just let's push this this text up a little bit because it's like it's miss it's mix, missing mixing with the card itself. Um. So I think like the what are these? These are card container H three. It should have a margin bottom of like one in. Yes. 
Maybe point eight M. Yeah, not as much. Or point five. Just wanted to lift up a little bit. Okay. Um, I can't really see. I can't really see the 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 gradient anymore. Let's just use our dark. It's, it won't have any. It's decent, right? Yeah. Okay. We mentioned putting some sort of shadow on this text up here too, right? Yeah, we can, I mean, we could do it on all the text. But would we do a box shadow, or what would we do? Yeah, I could do a box shadow. Is it going to do the same thing? Yeah, I think. We will see. Should we just the, put the, it on? The, where should we put right. it? We just put it under the... Uh... H1s? No, or... Um, we have right now the main section. Yeah, try putting it under the main. See, we'll What's see what happens. H2? No, see. <laughs> what is happening there? <laughs> well, it's the box around the H, so it's box shadow. But we want like text shadow if that's a thing, right? Because I think, we... I think it is a sh thing. Um, because we actually want to give the the text itself like depth. CSS text shadow. Yeah, it's the same thing. Text shadow generator. Okay, hopefully this doesn't crash the browser. Look, Mom, it's this, it it's, it, dude, it's the same thing. Okay, so just do the same thing, but do text shadow instead? Yeah, exit out of that text shadow generator before the computer dies. <laughs> um, not seeing anything. Is that, is that an H2? This, this is directly targeting that right here. Hmm. And let's go back to that text shadow. It might be a little bit different, actually. So, degree, 90. Distance. Five pixel, blur, fifteen pixel, opacity one. Yeah, it's very subtle. Lesser blur. Yeah, let's do like four. Where the blur is the third variable. Four pixel blur. Hmm. It should be should be doing it. Oh, text shadow is incorrect invalid property value oh there is no there is no third one this is this is too much that's why ooh <laughs> that's, but I, yeah. that's decent right i like it i mean chat probably hates it but you know they pay <laughs> no actually everything. no i like I, I let's put this on the entire app so let's go yeah. to index body everything has text shadow Boom. I would I would kind of soften it up a little bit, just like a tiny okay. bit. Okay. Tiny bit. I feel, I feel like everything like we've done increase, today just increase like the blur. It, yeah. It's like it's just like progressively gotten uglier. <laughs> <laughs> so that's decent. And then actually let's let's make the background on um, on these cards have a little bit of opacity, I think. I'm telling you, dude, like, if we do the opacity, like, white to, like, nothing, it'll be great. Like a gradient? Yeah, like a gradient. Like a gradient from, like, the white to the top. Oh, but I don't want the text to have. Here's what I want. I want um, RGBA for the background. Uh, what is our light variable? It's E. Wait, what is E in... How to convert zero e no convert e in hexadecimal to uh, bytes RGB yeah <laughs> oh god let's do e e to RGB it's getting yeah it's getting kind of weird when you combine like hex hex code with RGB like I don't like to mix oh, the two two thirty eight okay two thirty eight two thirty eight two thirty eight and we want uh, Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> um, question in the chat from Jimmy. Is it correct to add shadow on text? I have no idea. Um, uh, I would <laughs> say it's kosher. I mean, like, does it look bad? I wouldn't use it on, like, a whole bunch of text, right? Like, like if you have, like, a huge body of text, like if it's like a blog article, that would probably be kind of terrible. Mm. 
but for like short bits of text, it's fine. I think some other people would disagree, but oh, actually, did we did we end up? Did I end up? Oh, I was about to say, I, right now we're multiplying the background with light blue. Let's. What happens if we don't do anything to the background? Let's watch it. But doing the light blue multiply is decent. Um, oh. Wait, is it, is it not doing the color multiply properly because we have them both on the same uh, div? That's how I thought you were supposed to do it. I think, well, on the uh, H, see the uh, see, example thing uh, it blended. has. Because it's URL and then the color and then. So that's why, I, that's what I did. URL and it has all the colors and everything. Yeah, so it's like dot. Should, should be the same. Um, and Ed just mentioned I might actually be able to do, I can actually use my variable in here. Can I do light 0.5? I can. Yeah, that's great. Thanks for that, Ed. I think we, we need, um, we need another color on top or, or like another div below the background in order for, for, it to, for, for it to blend properly. Are you sure about that? I'm looking at the example code. Yeah, like there's a thing that says just color background because yeah, like we basically need like an extra. Which which one are you looking at? Um, like the very, very top of the thing. This one? Yes. But so click on that HTML right there. So you see there's a, there's a just color div. Mm -hmm. and there's the normal image div, and then mm -hmm. there's the blend. Right. And when you, you look, look at, at the CSS, CSS, BG blend just has that. Yeah, that's that's what we're doing. Where's so? Where's our color div? Wait, demo is the one with the color. No, see, demo is just the outer div. Yeah, but I'm saying like we don't have we don't have any like div that's just the color. So like our color is like real subtle right now. Well, no, no. Oh, uh, but see, so BG blend. Is, is is essentially both of them. It's that's the final did. version, right? But if you look at the CSS, background blend has all three of those properties, right? Right. So that's what we've done. So in our HTML, we have um, this div just called image, and then in our CSS, that has the 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 image, the size, and, and the multiplying in color. We're we're doing it exactly like they're doing it, Tony. I promise you. Okay. <laughs> it's I... it's it's working though, so watch. So like if you don't multiply it, you get the original image. Right. Okay. If Let's we try, do... try try using red. Uh, as the just, as just, the yeah, background color? Right. Okay, alright, alright, I believe. <laughs> okay. It's just, I guess the blue is just so subtle. It is like... very subtle, but I I mean it's decent, right? Yeah. Okay. Um one thing I want to do is give these link cards a margin bottom, because if I go full screen like this, you can't scroll past them. So uh, let's give the, the link cards. I guess we could combine it. I'll just do it separate. So margin bottom, 1M. It should allow us to scroll past or not. Um, there is some margin down there. Oh, wow. So technically that's there, but then each individual card, because it has margin, is being pushed down. Let's get rid of the margin on the card container. Hmm. And then those have margin too. Is that what's happening?
we're gonna go back and style this. I just wanna figure out like why does the, the margin of the link cards, like the margin bottom, doesn't exactly get, to, get applied. Cool. <laughs> Hello, Oliver, welcome. Having fun with CSS? I don't know, we've just spent two hours getting this very basic landing page going. I'll put these back to where they were. I think I'm okay with not having it. Um, Still not working. Oh well. Are you still with me, Tony? I'm with you. I. <laughs> I don't know how I feel anymore. Cool. Uh, Rodrigo is <laughs> mentioning. <laughs> Rodrigo is mentioning. Uh, you can gain speed dynamically by dynamically changing the CSS inside of Chrome and, and live preview variant. Yes, but at the same time, um, I would still have to go back to my editor and uh, change it. So. I. I do prefer to do that because we do have auto refresh on anyways. Okay, we have a landing page. Um, what time is it? It's 2 p.m. We've been streaming for, wait, no, it's not 2 p.m. It's 2 p.m. in Denver. It's 4 p.m. where I am. Can, can we add that uh, <laughs> drop shadow to the HR? Um, he's, sure. sitting, he's sitting there kind of naked. Sure, Tony. <laughs> Uh, how much longer did you want to go? Um, I don't know. I think we should at least maybe get one more page. But yeah, we have been streaming for two and a half hours. Um, box shadow on the HR. Boom. Try text shadow. Or it's does there. It have you, don't, to... you don't see it? It's there. Yeah, yeah, I know. But I'm saying, like you said, box shadow. Would it, would it be different if it was text shadow? I think it wouldn't show up if it was text shadow. See? Oh, you're right. You're right. <laughs> Weird. Um, okay, let's do this, though. Um, I'm going to deploy what I have because I want to get that domain going. So I'm going to deploy this with now. I do need to update. Would you like to explain what now is? Oh, sure. Yeah, so now is a tool for deployment. Thanks, Tony. Appreciate that. Um, static site generator. Well, a static site deployment, not a, not a generator. Um, right. It is, uh, they, they allow you to deploy back-end apps and front-end apps, but they do uh, support um, uh, static deployments. So like static websites, you install this tool, and then inside the directory that you want to deploy, you just type now, and it'll automatically deploy it. And every time you deploy, you get a brand new URL. Um, it's really great for, um... oh no, it's building, oh, okay, this might not be good. Wait, because it builds like on a generic. Uh, well, here's the thing, happen. because it saw the package JSON, it's not deploying this as like a static site. It thinks it's, well, technically what it can do is it can build it and then, oh, well, it can run it and then try to build it in the cloud. Let's see what happened though. It, it did generate a URL. It works. Okay, cool. I'm okay with that. <laughs> but at the same time, it started it. I'm skeptical. <laughs> Uh, Amy says this is looking good. I appreciate it. I think it it could definitely use some work, but we we did a lot today. We learned a little bit of SAS. We um, laid things out. Okay, so it's deployed. I'm gonna try to add a custom domain real quick. I'm gonna hide my screen just so that uh, the secret code doesn't pop up. Cool. 
so I got a thing. Let me copy the thing. I can't, I can't hear you uh, right now, tell me. Oh, and apparently for a, um, a .org domain, you actually need to verify the contacts to, I mean, we are officially the Save the Emojis organization, but okay. All right, we're back, Tony. Um, did any, did anyone hear what I, anything I said? No, no. What what, what do you what, what uh -oh. did you say? I was kind of responding to uh, randomness for a second. You saying Tony's leading the charge, it's like I'm leading leading us off a cliff right now. <laughs> yeah, pretty soon though, Tony. You're gonna yeah, you're gonna be teaching me. That's what Ed is saying. Well, um, I I know, I know yeah. a few like design things, but like when it comes to you, a lot of these. You have tricks. a degree in design. I think you know a bit more than a few design things. Right? Or not? Uh, I don't know. A couple. <laughs> I, I, uh, know, yeah, I, I know where to find good design. Okay. Save the emojis.org. I'm going to push this code up to GitHub too. Um, I do need to get ignore some things. So um, if I go to save the emojis.org. It's not working just yet. I had to uh, verify the domain and then in like. 20, 30 minutes, I can add the domain again, and it should work. OK, so everybody should be able to go today and see this website in the wild on their browsers. At savetheemojis.org, yeah. <laughs> what have we done? Ta-da, we did it. Slowly. All right, it's on GitHub. Um, I will say, like, visually, like, the last couple of things that we did, I think, look... Decent. Interesting, yeah. Right. So... <laughs> I, st I still, I, like, I feel like I hate the fonts again. Yeah, so, I mean, this is what we made last time, and it, it does, I would absolutely say this is high-quality, mediocre, decent, decent styling. <laughs> There's a lot of adjectives <laughs> that just mean not great. <laughs> Um, but we're trying, we're learning. Well, I mean, in, in the context of like, uh, you know, like a couple hours or what, whatever the uh, thing is, it's like, they, they, I think they look good and like considering they're from scratch, you know. Yes, yeah, so we can say that all day long. These things are from scratch. Yeah, like we, we were given like a week and it was like all we were doing, this would look so good. We'd probably, Amazing. they'd well, probably yeah. just give us a Nobel Prize. Yeah, definitely. Okay. <laughs> Um, let's, we're going to do one more page and it's not going to take us this long. We're, gonna, we're just going to do it real quick. Um, which one of these pages should we do? Um, let's do, um, I guess we do the sign up. I mean, like in theory, that shouldn't be too long. We'll just have like, basically it says sign up, says like a little paragraph or something that says like what you're signing up for. Mm -hmm. a simple input thing and that, that says email underneath it and even has like a placeholder and then just a button that would in theory sign you up for email Save, notifications email notifications of saving the emojis <clears throat> okay so um let's do this because we are we're just dealing with html right? there's there's no javascript there's no like client-side routing or anything like that we are literally going to like copy this index.html and then rename it and paste it and rename it to like sign sign up.html. And we'll just create like a, a link on the uh, on the index. On the index of like right where it says uh, sign up. Yeah, so like I think um, well we probably want when they click the card they want us they want it we want it to go there too. Yeah, could we put it on like the whole div? We we could. I don't know if this is how kosher yep. this is. Yeah. But we could do something like this. So this href goes to sign up.html. Let's see what happens. We're going to get like some weird. Oh, this is the deploy. Uh, like, can we get like a cursor that's a pointer? Yes, we could absolutely. Well, it, well, it should do that automatically. 
Um, oh yeah. One, two, seven, zero, eighty, eighty. Yeah, so we can get rid of this default styling, but when oh, we click gee. it, it goes to sign up, but yes. <laughs> Which is the same page right now. Yeah. Um, so let's do card, we'll style, we'll say card container anchor tag. And this is gonna be, do we have card container? No, card container is an index, yeah. So any anchor tag inside of here, the color is light and the text decoration is none. So it shouldn't be underlined or bolded or anything like that. Cool. So it's now when still you, a nice pointer, yeah. Yeah, when you hover over it, you see that, you click it, you go to the sign up page. Right now it's exactly the same because we copied and pasted. Rodrigo is saying log in and donate, maybe 10 minutes if they are good. Everything on Noob Quest is great. <laughs> Wait, Except what are we today. saying? Oh, stats would take three hours. Login and donate would take 10 minutes. You're right, you know what? Let's, let's I mean, I probably don't want to go more than another 30 minutes, but I think we can get some stuff done. I think we can at least make, do like if we make a donate page, like it just links to the Patreon, and then I mm. think we can come back okay. and uh, we'll, we could do it like off, off the stream, but like find like a, a wildlife uh, foundation to link to as well. Okay. Um, here's the thing though. We technically want like this background image to be, well, are we going to put a different background image on each page? I think, I think that would, that would be good. Cause it kind of shows okay. like, oh, I'm on a different page. Okay. So here's what we need to do. So in, in sign up, um, we want the header we want the main, but now like everything in the main goes away. And so now the sign up page should just be totally empty. Um, let's also make it so like the header links to the home page. Um, yeah, we're gonna have to do the same thing. So like anchor tag. href is slash, and we technically want this same thing on the index page too. This is one of the caveats of like not using uh, client side routing in front of framework because we're, we're reusing this header on, like it's copy and pasted into both pages instead of like reusing the same thing. That should make it nice and blue and ugly, cool. Well, let's target it and do the same thing. So in our main CSS, the header, any anchor tag that is a child of the header should have a color of light. So let's do anchor tag here. Um, color light. And uh, text decoration is none. Cool. Should do it. Cool. And then we click there, it goes to the home page. We click here, it goes to the sign up page. Rock and roll. Um, Oliver is mentioning if we remove 100 view height from the body, it should fix the issue we were having here. Oh, look at that. Like it. So if we're here, it actually does scroll below it. I guess I don't like that it has to scroll to the right. Um, with 100 view height, view, view width, and um, overflow x is hidden, so that way it doesn't scroll. Yeah, so now you can't you can't scroll left and right, but you can scroll up and down. Go to the sign up page. Beautiful. <laughs> okay. Um, that's great. We've got our sign up page. Let's start working on the things that we need. So uh, we are going to have a main section. Inside of that, we'll probably have like an H2 for sign up, a paragraph, an input, and then like a button below it. We're probably inside the input, we can say like enter your email or something like that. Mm -hmm. So let's do this. Um, we probably want. Do we want a section inside of the main or should we put everything? I, in the I main? guess we could do like a section and then everything's like a just column. So it would be on top of each other. 
Um, but if we did main as a flexbox with column, then technically we could put all of this in one column, right? Yeah. Let's, let's do that. So let's just, so we have main and then inside of that, um, you know, let, let's, ah, ah. no, okay. Let's just do like an H2. H2, sign up. Sign up. And then there's a paragraph. Um, What are we? What are we? What are we saying exactly to <laughs> to sign up? I don't know. So sign up, uh, to, sign up to be notified. Be notified of ways you can help save the, the emoji. You can help save the emojis. <laughs> um, we'll never share your email with anyone else. We'll never share your email with. Any one else, and then put the devil emoji. <laughs> okay, devil, smiling devil. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you can be sure that you will receive lots of emojis in your inbox. But you can. Yeah, we can work on this like text later. <laughs> we can. Sure. I want to talk to it. Of. Be sure of what. Uh, but you can be sure you will receive yeah, yeah, you just lots of emojis. Party. And, and viruses. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so that's great. That's, that's decent. Let's style this thing now. So now that we have, we don't want to bring in a landing anymore. We actually want to bring in, um, we'll create a new one for sign up. Um, let's duplicate what we have for landing and call this uh, sign up. I mean, I guess technically, 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 we could reuse all of this, and the only thing that we change is the background image URL. Mm -hmm. Let's let's do that while we're here. So, in landing, technically, we want all of this to actually be in index. Boom. This goes into index. OK. But the one thing that changes is in landing dot um, bg with the child of dot image has a specific uh, URL. Okay, and then now in our sign up, we can also get rid of all this extra stuff and just do that. Why does it look like the text is black in the background? Because I messed something up. <laughs> um, so, did I do it right though? So, BG. We may need to bring in all of these things as well. Oh, the background image. So we have that. We have that. Have I broken it? Oh, the homepage looks good. Homepage is there. But sign up is broken. We might have a sin. If you go into sign up. Oh, uh, because I created this file, maybe we have to um, restart my, my styles. It's not getting created. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, let's get rid of all of the extra styles. So right now, this is sign up. And let's kill our task and restart it. Now, if we go to sign up. For whatever reason, it's not picking up um, sign-up.scss. Maybe it doesn't like the dash. Wait, do do you have to go back into the uh, package JSON thing and specify it? Uh, no, because what I did in the package JSON was told it anything oh, in this okay, directory okay. should show up in styles. 
Huh. So you have to. We don't have to do watch styles. Well, it shouldn't be watching styles. It should be watching SCSS. Go back to landing. Mm -hmm. CSS. No, no, no. Dot CSS. SCSS. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, what the is thing that? Is... That you mean? Where? Oh, it's a un untracked file. It's a Git thing. Okay. Interesting. It should just pick, because before all we had to do was start it up and it automatically picked up uh, landing.scss. Try, try just making a, a file, like without any, just call it, uh, call it stats, because that's going to be another one. Stats.scss. And we kind of want just this. So in theory, it should have just immediately made a stats CSS. Yeah, so change detected. Oh, no, that change detected comes from live server. What are we doing wrong? There's, so there's nothing that you have to say in, in Node to, like, make it aware? No, because the main thing, like, we're not mentioning landing in here anywhere. It automatically created that for us. Hmm. Like, I don't want to have to specify each individual thing. Or you should be able to do it, like, <laughs> dynamically, or... Um, suggestion from Robin, and hello, Robin, welcome. Uh, topic for next time, use utility-based CSS, like Tailwind CSS, instead of SAS crap. <laughs> Um, I've seen Tailwind before. It's super interesting. Like the concept is like basically there are CSS classes for all of the different type of CSS properties that you would. Um, is it not Tailwind app? Tailwind CSS for all the different things that you would be modifying. Um, learn more. So your HTML actually ends up looking like um, there's like lots of classes added to it, but it's basically all of the classes that you added that you add would have been like CSS properties that you add. Oliver's mentioning there could be a syntax error. Like, yeah, let's just try running um, npm run Lenter. styles. Yes, well, styles watch. Uh, what did I call it? Watch styles. It's not giving us an error. Yeah. Um, I could, if I do star slash CSS, does it still ignore anything that's um, uh, a partial, like an underscore? Let's see. Also, what's in index? So index SCSS has um, like our basic body and header style and like um, headers style. And then landing is just specific to the landing page. Sign up is going to be specific to the sign up page. And stats will be sp specific to the stats page. Um, It's not working. This, I mean, this is why it's taking us so long because we've had little issues like this. It's not, it's not just um, noodling around. <laughs> obligatory noodles, noodling around. <laughs> I could totally go for some ramen. Yeah, me too. I'm gonna actually go get some later. <laughs> I'm just waiting for someone in the chat to tell me. We, we've got smart people. We've got Robin. We've got Oliver. We've got everyone else who's been providing suggestions tonight. Like, what the heck are we doing wrong? So to, to review, 
our package JSON has a, a, a thing using um, uh, Node SAS that tells it to watch recursively the SAS folder and then anything inside of it. Um, Actually, I mean, technically what I had before was just this. So watch anything in the SAS folder and then output it to the styles folder. Um, however, when we do this, we only end up with, uh, and I guess we can see really quick, like if I modify landing.css, junk, color, green, and save it, it saw it. Oh, you know what? It could be because it, we didn't modify it. So let's say sign up, we say junk, uh, color is green. No. Oh, yeah. Oh! Why? Why? Like, when I first run it, it should just generate the file. Like, why do I have to modify it? Like, it did not exist in styles yet. <laughs> That's stupid. You know what I mean? Like, it could be because it's watch. Like, watch it for changes. I don't know. I don't like that. It could be just specifically a node SAS thing. Coding okay. is silly. <laughs> and it, so, this is exactly why I feel it's appropriate. So, like, I, like I don't know if anyone in the chat knows, but I'm like working on um, making like little little like logo characters for Noob Quest, mm. and JavaScript is going to be a knight, and CSS is going to be a wizard. And uh, it totally makes sense why CSS would be a wizard. You have to know the arcane and uh, specific things of the CSS lore <laughs> to, to be able to uh, uh, master it. My okay, favorite, so... <laughs> uh, like, I think it's a, I think it was an old HTML lit thing. And it's like, I don't think it exists anymore, but it was Blink. It's, I think it's still out there. There's blink. There's marquee. Yeah, you can still do it. There's like yeah, like these <laughs> these like decrepit old things that are stuck around. Uh, okay, so um, yeah, Oliver mentions maybe we should consider raising a bug to Node SAS, but Robin is saying um, don't think it's a bug. It's implemented to skip the initial build. Uh, maybe it's with the the dash W. Like it skips the initial build and then, then just watches it for changes. Um, I have issue with that, I, I don't, because I would expect it to, like when it first fires up to do the build and then maybe, okay, maybe there's another thing on the command line where we can say do the initial build, maybe that's what we were missing. Um, so watch. <laughs> Oliver's mentioning the best thing is 10 marquees inside of each other. Oh, I see. Yeah, and Robin's making a good point. Like, what if you had, like, hundreds of uh, SAS files? When you first started this thing up, you wouldn't want to transpile everything. You just want to transpile them as they change. So you typically might have two tasks, like build and then watch. So um, let's have a script just called styles. And that's going to be this without the W, I think. And then when we watch styles, first should, oh, actually, when we, um, before we start watching things, when we do styles, we should do npm run styles and, and this is specific to my implementation like when i run this code first i want to build everything so that should run styles then i want to watch everything with concurrently um let's see if this happens so let me actually just delete all of these C uh, css files go away okay and now if i do an npm start it should run it first and then yeah <laughs> Good suggestion, Robin. <laughs> so we have a task that builds everything, and then we have a task that just watches it after it's built. What say you about that, Tony? 
Are you still there, Tony? Yeah, there? This, some of this node stuff is like hurting my brain. <laughs> it's more of like Linux stuff. It's like running commands before running other commands. Okay, we have we have officially wasted 30 minutes not getting anything done. Um, but we are on the sign up page now, and if we go to the sign up page, it looks decent. Cool. So one thing is we want our sign up to have like a max width of like 30, 40 percent, so it like smushes in, right? Um, so let's do that. Let's say, and we are in sign up SCSS. So the, the width here should be uh, 50%. I don't know, 60%? What do you think? Let's do, let's do uh, 60. Okay. Cool. Just gotta justify content and all that. Well, all that this, jazz. Yeah, this is actually why I would want this to not be on the main and why we would have a child container. Because if we make the main 100%, it could be a flex box that centers things, and then we could have a section inside of it that we give a max width. Let's do that. So let's leave this as 100%, but in our HTML, like this h2 and this p tag will actually go inside of a section. Um, and then let's give this a class of, what do we call this? Uh, content. Sign up content. So, uh, sign up, sign up content. Cool. And uh, we'll say sign up content has a width of 60%. And that just that just works because our main is 100, so it takes up everything, and it's a display flex, and it centers everything. Nice. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give this a margin top of 1M. Push it down a little bit. Cool. Um, sign up to be notified of ways you can help save the emojis. We'll never share your email with anyone else, but you can be sure you will see, you will receive lots of emojis. Cool. Uh, we have a spelling error on the sign up page. Receive, not receive. E before I. Except after J, after J. I just made that up. Receive. There you go. Okay, let's look back at our mock-up. <laughs> Landing, not that one. Sign up. We've got our text. We need a text input. We need a fat fat input. Okay. Um, let's say that here we'll have a input. form. Well, uh, oh, okay. form, yeah. Yeah, let's put the input inside of a form. Input. Okay. Um, and um, we'll have like a placeholder. Email. Oh uh, yeah, enter Art. your email. Yeah. And the um. Class. Class here. Well, not class. Um, we, yeah, are, we are going to style it. Um, type. Type is email. And this is required. Let's just see what happens. OK. Tiny, Oof. tiny little thing. Little baby. <laughs> um, so uh, Robin um, is mentioning, can I be super nitpicky and suggest something? Never ever styles based on tag name. Always provide classes because specific specificity is a PETA. Oh, pain in the pain in the, okay. <laughs> 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 yes. Um, no, I get totally what you're saying. Um, and the because but the idea is well, well that's 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 just like your opinion, man. But I get what you're saying um, because. To, if you're styling things based specifically on their tag name, then um, you have to be sure that the specificity is correct to actually make this work. Uh, and in our case, it is. So I'm more of the opinion of like, if you know how to target it and it's a unique enough target, then it's okay. For us, each page has their own main tag. So to me, like, why not just target the tag name? I don't know. It's one of those things. Hopefully, I didn't dissuade you and make you leave the stream. But <laughs> it's it's I think all maybe on larger on larger applications. Like you want to 
Bim's class name. Okay. Yeah, there, there, are, there are entire, um, like, like Bim is something uh, that I've read about but never actually, like, tried myself, CSS Bim. Um, and it's literally just, like, a naming convention and way of styling your elements. Um, so, like, literally every single class name you create follows a convention of, like, the, con the container and, like, what's inside of it. Um, and you can get very serious about your, your CSS style naming. Um, like, that, that's, like, its own um, sort of theory in and of itself. Like, because you end up having, like, different, like, uh, not really, like, I guess coding, but, like, more just, like, stylistic choices, you know. But this is the coding garden where single commas are king. <laughs> commas are and, king. <laughs> and uh, you can use CSS on HTML tags. Yeah. Um... We'll, we'll have to have a manifesto. And the it, like the coding manifesto, garden manifesto? Yeah, the coding garden manifesto, and it's just, it will not be questioned, except when it's blatantly wrong, which we <laughs> might not even have a manifesto. Yeah, but I, I think that's that's the thing. Like, all of, be, like CSS is a language, it has rules, and you can just use it however you want. Um, for but, better or worse. For better or worse, and people have come up with things that you can do on top of it that make it easier to use, make it easier to to navigate like when you're on teams and navigate a code base um but at the end of the day you can still do whatever the hell you want as long as it's valid css and i think i think that's like that brings up like a bigger point is like sometimes not not to say like that there's not like best practices but there's definitely like just differences of opinion and like approach absolutely um, how to how to like look at things because i mean like for example like we're using like hexamedecimal stuff for our colors but you could easily use rgb uh, or like whatever you felt like. I think the last thing we'll do is just make the colors extremely ugly before we deploy it. Just, oh yeah, yeah, just yeah. Just to show yeah. that it's possible. <laughs> <laughs> like one. Okay. Oh, let's make that thing bigger though. That yeah, like... let's do it. Let's let's make this input giant. Okay. And then we'll, we'll give it a button underneath there. Okay, so um, we could do. Um, basically, we we want to target this input. We could give it a class name. Yeah, let's give it a class name of big ass input. And um, let's give this a font size of like 2M. OK. Is it the font size that, that's expanding the actual input? Yes. <laughs> Can we center, center the text within? The, no, actually, no. Keep it. Keep it uh, left aligned, but maybe give it some margin top. Yeah. Oliver, so we, we should have a whole show just on code opinions, and everybody can chime in. Uh, but Oliver's mentioning um, when people write CSS that targets too loosely, then your component gets random styles from their code, and then you can't work out what they were originally targeting to make that selector better. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the main thing, like especially working on a team or like if you're if you're building something for someone else to use, you absolutely want to be like very specific so that you're not interfering. Like you want to namespace things by like everything you style has like a specific two letter acronym in front of it, so you're not interfering with class names that they might actually create. All of these are very very valid points. Would, would that be more like like style guide theory like 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 let's say ooh, we we developed like our own like almost like style guide manifesto for like save the emojis kind of thing mm. yeah um break timer stretch it out okay um let's give this thing some margin around it and then maybe some padding i don't i don't know let me be like a tiny bit of padding like point 1M. Oh, so subtle. So perfect. <laughs> Y'all. Uh, I think placeholder should actually be not enter your email. It should be blank or email at email.com. Yeah, nerd at <laughs> post mailbox.com yeah that's great cool <laughs> and then we'll have a button under there 
that says submit or sign up. And then, and then, like you get an alert that says all your info belongs to us. <laughs> well, that would require a JavaScript. We're not going to write any JavaScript. Um, type of this button will be. Oh, this is kind of weird. This is the first new quest. Like, not a single line of JavaScript was written. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I would say so. Yeah. <laughs> weird. Um, the button is showing up on the same line, but that's okay. Um, here's what we'll do. Oh, it's 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 still in the form. Yeah. Oh well, we want it to be in the form. Okay. Technically, I mean, I think actually, if we put that there. E. <laughs> Um, actually, but by doing that in our set, like margin, we don't want it to be that much. Okay. Uh, that'd be margin for button. Okay. And then, um, let's give well, this. We could just do that for now, just to like have it, like this will be what it looks like. Sign up button. Okay. Tony, you have really great button skills. We found this out last time. Oh God. <laughs> the pressure is on. Um, uh, let's, all right, let's do outline none. Outline none. Uh, border none. Border none. All right, let's just look at that right now. All right, uh, let's make it bigger. Well, also, let's, let's do the font size is like similar one. Font size is 2M. Should like blow yeah. up. Yeah. yeah, and then we'll give it like padding of like 0.4M. Okay. okay, we'll give it a background color of our dark color. And we'll have to change color to light. And for now, I guess we'll do like, um, oh, we won't even worry about hover. Uh, let's see, let's do letter spacing. Actually, I want to put, I do want to put this button inside the form. Because that way it'll yeah it'll sub actually submit the form. That's good. Okay. All right. So <laughs> we'll do letter spacing like point one m or point two m. It's gonna space out the letters. Yeah. Oh. Sh okay. Mm-hmm. Sign <laughs> up. Uh, and then we'll text transform. We'll do uppercase. I think. I, I think that this two spaced out. Let's do like point one. Okay, yeah, and then we'll leave it. We'll leave it like a lowercase. I think it looks fine. Um, well, let's let's just try it real quick. Text transform uppercase. Uppercase. Yeah, we'll see how it looks. I like that. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, let's try giving it a border radius of ten and like pixels. Hmm. Subtle. <laughs> yeah, in the chat, um, Oliver's mentioning uh, they wonder if this emoji.com is available. You actually can't have emojis in domain names. Um, I've, I've tried. Believe me, I've tried. <laughs> okay. I think, I, think, I think this is a great page. So, home page, sign up, enter your email. Um, we could do, so technically this is still JavaScript, but we actually could just say um, submit. I think you can just do submit and put some JavaScript in here, like alert. Emojis inbound. Well, we, I, I think we could, can we do a function? We need access, to, I think we get access to the event. We do like event dot prevent default, something like that. Is it on dash submit? Mm. HTML submit attribute. On, on submit, all lowercase, like that. Emojis inbound. Okay, cool. <laughs> I 
And then actually, so I, yeah, we did say we weren't going to do any JavaScript, but we could actually do window.location.href equals slash, so it takes you home. Okay, wat at wat.com. Emojis inbound, and it takes you back to the home page. Yeah, I think we give it some more work. We'll make it look nicer, but it's coming together. <laughs> CSS from scratch. Oh, okay. Uh, Oliver is mentioning um, you can do, um, they enabled Unicode domain names. I have seen, there actually, are, there are uh, top level domain names of, um, I think like uh, Chinese characters. <laughs> uh, Robin says, what means what in their language? You're from Belgium, right? What? Let's go to Google right. Translate. What? <laughs> We're going to go to. Uh, no, no, the incoming Maybe. language is Belgian. Bengali? Is Belgian a language? Dutch. Do you speak in Belgian? Dutch. <laughs> Danish. Okay. 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 What? 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 Okay. Um, we could write some more. I think I'll push this to GitHub and then like officially deploy it to save the emojis.org. And then I guess we could like kind of. Oh, oh let's it. let's let's find it before I do that. Let's find a different image for the sign up page. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. I kind of want to have um, like an office or something. Sign up. Yeah, I'm like office. an office. Which one? Uh, I kind of like the just people just like sitting in a thing. Let's keep going. Just or like type in computer. Office computer. Or no, just computer. Like maybe there's like an image of like an old like computer. Or I kind of like uh, just the what hands about, on the desk. What about this one? This one? No, that one right there with the coffee. This one. No, no, no. Up, up, up. This one. Up to the left. This one. Yeah. Okay, why not? Um, so in our sign up sass, the image goes here. And what do we get? Oh. Oh my goodness, look at that <laughs> professional looking. It's so professional. We can go to the home page. We can sign up. <laughs> I think it's it's also kind of weird to see emojis like on a web page. Mm -hmm. And I think like you you're saying like before this big, you mean? Or at all, like on a professional looking web page. <laughs> and I think before we go, we need to like uglify the colors. Like I think the chat has challenged us hmm. in a what? way. We need to just give this the. Okay, so. What, what, did, what did we call this before? It was like something vomit. Our, the styling. Oh, somebody called it something vomit. Okay. Um, let me add everything. Add sign up page. Push it up to GitHub. Deploy it. Yeah, it is using. So here's the thing. Like because I have um, our our um, package start, JSON. Well, our, yeah, and our start script has like running a light live server. When I deploy it to now, it actually is putting it on a Node.js server rather than just statically deploying the files. Um, I could fix that, but for now, I won't worry about it. Robin, all you do is throw shade. <laughs> oh, you, said, you need to collab with designers. <laughs> what do you think I do? Yes, uh, um, Tony is actually a designer, but m more of like, so okay. Tony is a designer in terms of like uh, like graphic design. Like you can create Im cool images and stuff like that, but there are people that focus on um, color and spacing and um, that that kind of stuff. Like a, like I, like I said, like I think we were picking a color palettes that I wasn't necessarily thinking about like where they're gonna look good in the browser. Mm. 
This is failing to deploy. Um, let's see. Now deploy ignore files. I could tell it to ignore the package JSON. Z now. We should have like in the share work thing, we should have like a, a color palette challenge, like who can produce like the nicest color palette with the Adobe cooler. In the Discord, wait, say again. Like, um, like we're we're trying to come up with like just different color palettes and stuff. I think we should have like a a color palette challenge in the uh, the Discord, and we can like vote like at the end of the week who has the best color palette. Yeah. Um, Robin says I thought Tony worked in some hospital machinery of some sort. He does. <laughs> <laughs> but but before that, he went to art school <laughs> to become a graphic designer. I, I, I guess I guess my my design sensibilities uh, now that we're seeing them in action that explains why I work in the hospital. <laughs> yes, absolutely. No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, honestly, let's let's create a build script. Okay, we're gonna create a new folder. No, let's do this. Um, new file. We'll call this build.sh. This will um, uh, wait. shebang should run in a shell. We want to copy star dot well first we want to uh, make a directory called um, dist. Before that we're going to remove the directory called dist. Then we create a directory called dist. Then we copy all of the HTML files in here into the dist folder. Then we copy um, recursively the styles directory into, not slash dist, just into dist. Um, and that should do it, I think. So. Um, let's add the executable privilege to the build file <laughs> and then run it. Um, bin slash bash. Okay, so that created dist. It put all of the HTML in there. Oh, and actually, sorry, this should be put them into styles slash styles. There we go. Should delete it, then recreate it. Now we have the disk, which has that stuff in there. This is what we want. Uh, before that, it should run um, npm run um, styles, just to make sure that it builds the styles beforehand. OK, one more time. Build the styles, recreate the folder. Awesome. Now this disk folder is just static files, and this is actually what I want to deploy to now. <laughs> okay, so, and saw how quick that was because it wasn't trying to like build anything. And now, moment of truth: uh, save the emojis.org. Will it blend? Is that even a? YouTube thing anymore? Will it blend? I think so. I don't know if it's still relevant, but I, I know like for a while after it was Will It Blend, there was people that started like taking like thousand degree knives and like cutting through things <laughs> and then they started they had like some sort of industrial crusher that was just crushing everything. Yeah. Eventually they're gonna have like some sort of like lava pit and just throw stuff into it. Oh, I I did the wrong domain. I typed it in save these emojis? That's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Save the emojis.org. There we go. Sweet. All right, I'm, I'm up. I'm refreshing. Wait, 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 give it a second. It's got to generate the SSL certificate. I'm going to keep refreshing. I'm on. I'm on. You can see it? No. Okay. Wait, uh, yeah. 404. 404 of this page. Oh, there we go. It should work now. <gasps> yes! Oh, dude! <laughs> Oh, because uh, yeah, I'm using a different browser, or like the emojis look a little different, but yeah, yeah, well, especially like if you're on Windows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna try it in Safari just to see what happens. 
looks so good. <laughs> cool. Mad, mad decent. Um, okay, that was fun. This definitely did not go as planned, but it was a good time. It um, was Noodle Quest. <laughs> Uh, Robin says, I can see it. It is huge. Damn. Um, we'll do build. We'll just make sure that we can run the, the, uh, the build file. Okay. I, I think, like, all things considered, like, this is definitely, like, a cool... Um, get, the, get to see SAS in action. Yeah. And you got to like have some you, interesting You may not, oh actually, so we did mention we were gonna mess around with the variables. Uh, like I said, you may not like our design. But this is peak performance. <laughs> I'm just gonna update uh, now really quick because it does that update. Um, but yeah, here's what we do. So we came up, we, we found these color palettes earlier. <laughs> <laughs> so before we go, um, let's take the, um, Variables. Okay, so we have our primary color. Which one should be our primary color? Are we? Where are we using the primary color? Are we? No, I I don't even think we're really using well, it. We're just gonna change light and dark. So what is our light color going to be? Like pink? You know what? Yeah, yeah. Let's <laughs> do like a nice a nice vivid pink. A nice vivid pink. There we go. And then the dark will be like this blue. What's the complement of pink? Uh, the green. But we want a dark color. Yeah, that's not, but like the, the well, it's not even going to be like the dark color. The well, if it's a complement, it'll be the opposite, and it'll just be, it'll it'll stand out. Okay. Um. I promise. Th those two colors—is that what you mean? Yeah, like whatever. The, oh yes! God! <laughs> Vaporwave. Oh, <laughs> uh, where are where did our images go though? They're buried. Um, blocked by client. Uh, do I have something happening? Oh yeah. There we go. Yes. Someone asked that you bought this domain for fun. No, we bought this because we're serious about the cause. We really want to save the emojis, guys. We really do. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, and the, the what we were just showing there is because we created these SAS variables, we could literally change the primary and color, uh, secondary color to anything we want. Um, let's. Let 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 us do uh, monochromatic. Let's find like a. I, I I think this should be the thing. Like in the Discord throughout the week, we should have like everybody contributes like what they think the best like two or three colors for the site should be, and we can like vote on it. And we'll change it like every week. We can change it like every day over the course of the week. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is a real fun tool. I want to do, let's do like a red and a yellow. McDonald's. <laughs> so let's say our... Our dark will be the red. Okay, dark is red. And the light will be this this nice... It's like nice, nice cheese yellow. A nice American cheese right there. <laughs> uh, where are we at? Yes. It's so good. Oh, oh my, oh yes, it's like Soviet Union in here. Um, okay, I can't believe there are still 24 people watching. You all are great. <laughs> <laughs> this was fun. Um, okay, I didn't deploy, so right now, if you're watching out there, please go to savetheemojis.org because every day, dozens of emojis are left forgotten and unused. And together, we can help them survive. And so that's what we're going to do. We're actually going to find, like, some statistics about, like, so I'm sure it's there of, like, what are the most used emojis, and, like, we'll have some sort of data visualization for... And that could be, like, a whole other thing of, like, we never really visualized data before. Yes, that'd be fun. So we could actually show, like, statistically, like, the, you know, like, the policeman emoji is the most underused, or, like the pizza emoji or something. I don't know, whatever it is. Yeah, we could do uh, like blog posts that, that um, what do you call it? Um, just like break down different emojis. And the one blog post would just be all about that emoji and its different uses and how it's being misused potentially. 
Um, Ed says, thanks for the stream. You're very welcome. Rodrigo says, I know CJ is a domain addict, but what about you, Tony? Oh, I, uh, I don't have, I only have my, my own personal domain and it's, it's kind of been a, like under construction for forever, but, uh, I'd like to start just buying stupid domains and just log up the internet. So I'm using this colorblind tool. Our, our site looks decent. Like, like, I mean, we're using very simple colors, but no matter which uh, one you choose, it's pretty. Actually, no, I don't even need you to close the, I can change the window on my own com computer and watch it change. Yeah. I, again, like, I feel like I want to change the fonts now, but. <laughs> I change. Next time. I'm, I don't, I'm not going to push up these ugly colors, but it was just a demonstration of uh, SAS variables. There you go. Okay, that's it for today's stream. Um, this was noodling around with Tony <laughs> and CJ. Um, uh, but yeah, so but actually before we go, there is a question in the chat. Let me get rid of all this stuff. Um, Jimmy asks, can you explain uh, the config with concurrently? Sure, so if you look in our package JSON, we're using uh, this package called concurrently. It is a dev dependency, uh, but this is just pulled down from NVN. It's a convenient way of running two different processes at the same time and in the same terminal window. So it accepts multiple parameters, and each of those it runs in parallel. So basically what we're telling it is first, build all of the styles. So we have one task that takes all of our SAS and transpiles it. And then in, in bash, this uh, double ampersand says, do this, and if this successfully completes, then do everything on the right-hand side. And so this says, concurrently run this task and this task. So basically it's running a watch server, which is live server, and it's running watch our SAS for any changes at the same time. So any time a SAS file uh, changes, it'll automatically be transpiled. And any time any file changes, the browser will automatically refresh to show the latest changes. So it's a combination of all that. And then I made my own like custom build bash script that just takes all of the things that we care about. And this is what we actually deploy. I, um, um, yeah, what's up? I was going to say, I also, I just looked up the uh, domain on my phone and it does not look that bad. Oh, on phones? Yeah. Okay, what kind of phone do you have? Uh, I think it's like an iPhone something. Five, um, six. I am going to ignore client slash. Do you have an iPhone? Yeah, How I've long upgraded. Have you had an iPhone? For a while, like I, uh, I was using like my like some sort of BlackBerry type thing, and then a, the battery died, and I inherited an iPhone. Mm. Add build script. So you have an iPhone five? Is that what you said? I, I don't know. It's not, it's not the newest one. It's a couple ones behind. Okay. Save them emojis.org. <laughs> See you, Rodrigo. Thanks for tuning in. Again, thanks to everyone for tuning in. Thanks for bearing with us and our weird uh, emoji antics. And also just like we took so long to build like the most basic thing, but it was fun. I is, still... this what, is this what it looks like on your phone, Tony? It looks a little, a little better. Okay. But I mean, yeah, like it looked, it, look, it basically looks better than I thought it was going to look. That's the important thing. That's important. Okay. Um, yeah. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Probably we'll do some katas on Wednesday. Um, I hope. Maybe some other streams upcoming. Watch the channel for upcoming things. Um, I will. I try to put up upcoming streams here so you can actually set a reminder for yourself. But thanks everyone for tuning in. Um, this was fun, Tony. Thanks for doing this. Yeah, thanks for thanks for having me, and thanks for putting up with uh, my shenanigans. And remember, save those emojis. Save the emojis.org. Save the emojis.org. Um, they can always use your help <laughs> wherever you are in the world. Have a wonderful uh, morning, afternoon, evening, or night. Here's this.